Welcome to Thread Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, Denver. And I'm Teresa. And today we've got two special guests with us. We have my... Three. Three, three special guests. Yes, four. We have three. <laughs> four oh, special four. guests. <laughs> three and a half. We? <laughs> four. Um, we have Madison. If you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Madison. This is my sister. I'm Denver's sister. I have two sisters. Madison is the middle sister, three years older than me. We grew up together because we're siblings. And <laughs> That's how that goes. Have, yeah. <laughs> and we have Chris. Chris is Madison's husband. Newly appointed. Absolutely. Newly appointed. New to the team. Very, yeah. very excited to join. And then we have, squad. we have Fred. We have Fred. And then Fred. And then we have Small Fry. And then we have Small Fry. AKA maybe James. Yeah, we don't have a name yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting for James. So Madison is uh, in her second trimester. Yeah. So the theme for this episode, because we have Madison on, is going to be a baby talk. We've got a lot of pregnant baby stories. And parenting. I'm, parenting stories. And I've got an airline story booked in here too. Oh. Is it an airline and baby combined we'll story? No, no, this one's just an airline story because uh, Chris, what do you do? I'm an airline pilot. He is. And Madison? I'm an aircraft sales broker. We got some avionics people up in here. So I kind of wanted to get one uh, story, but in there. Aviation people. Aviation. <laughs> I was like, is that a word? And you will find that I <laughs> say things it is wrong a word. It is a, a word. Oh. It is a word. Avionics are the instruments inside an airplane. I was close. to fly. I was close. So aviatics or aviation and electrics. Mm. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys will find out that I say a lot of things wrong uh, through the <laughs> podcast. But I just keep going. I just keep rolling. We mispronounce things, misread things. We edit. Things. We don't edit. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Everything I edit goes. those things out. Sometimes they come through to the listeners and the viewers. And it is as it is. You got anything, Teresa? I feel like um, I'm doing all the talking. Here. You are doing all the talking. Yeah. <laughs> Taking over. Um, yeah, we have some great stories for you, and we're excited to have our second guests on this podcast. So you want to get into it? Let's get into it. I'm going to start off with a story, and then I have a gift for you, too. Okay. But I'm going to get to a story first. A gift? Yep. We got a gift for each <sighs> Is of you. Is it a amazing. story from Reddit? They're all Reddit stories. Okay. All the stories come from Reddit. I thought he was going to go personal Reddit. for a second, no, no, no. and I'm like, whoa, hold up now. No, no, there was no. no briefing on that. We don't need to throw anybody under the bus right now. We might get into some personal like, stories later. You had later. a wedding speech. That was your one yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> well, so when you were 12, do you remember? <laughs> we start with the Reddit stories, and then who knows where it goes from there. Okay. So this one is coming from the subreddit, Mother-in-Laws from Hell. It was posted 22 days ago. Mother-in-law from hell is upset that she doesn't know my baby's name yet. My husband and I are expecting our first baby. This process has reinforced the lack of boundaries and empathy from my mother-in-law and even some of the other family members. We're keeping the baby's name a surprise. We're fibbing and saying we're still considering names. Mother-in-law is super upset that she doesn't know the name. She tries to get other relatives to ask on my behalf. She will also make it a topic of conversation that we're not telling people the name as though that makes us sound like crazy people. <laughs> Last week at a party, she announced, I am referring to the baby as Voldemort because he's who shall not be named. It's <laughs> very cute, actually. <laughs> Fortunately, everyone at the party who heard this did not give a reaction and the subject was quickly changed. She brought it up repeatedly that evening. She's very narcissistic. If we tell her to please stop, she'll do one of her usual ones like, say, I guess I'm just the worst mother-in-law in the world, or stop being so dramatic, it's just a joke, or she'll figure out that it's bothering us and she'll do it even more. Out of everything she's done, this comment doesn't bother me so much, but what's the best way that I can handle this? My husband and I just give zero reaction and then we move on to different subjects. So how do I deal with my mother-in-law? You know, it's really awkward. I didn't think he was going to bring up my post. On the first <laughs> oh, no. First one. Just kidding. Just kidding. I thought this one was pretty good because we don't know what the name of your baby is yet. And you are yeah. keeping a surprise, which you have full rights to. But I just thought it was kind of funny because I kind of want to refer to your baby as you now shall not be named. <laughs> okay. Um, the, other one, day, the other day, I got to use a Harry Potter quote on Chris. And <laughs> I danced around like a cobbler elf or a like, keebler elf for like ever because I was so excited. It was maybe the happiest I've seen you I, ever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, so I think that if you refer to our baby as Baltimore, I would love that. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Like, I think she just hates her mother-in-law so much that she hates the uh, this It feels job. like there's a little bit of baggage like, there going is. on before I was, this. I was going to say, I feel like the boundary issues thing um, definitely <laughs> is probably not the first time that there's been boundary issues. But mm -hmm. I will say from personal experience that things get really heightened when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, I mean your mom i mean because we've been together seven years and i adore your mother and we've never had any conflict or issues and then i wasn't eating <laughs> I, to say i wasn't eating well was an understatement in the first trimester like, I, baby brought to you by hershey and <laughs> mcdonald's, and, mcdonald's and, french fries yeah. like, there's a reason his nickname is small fry, <laughs> small fry. <laughs> small fry. <laughs> um and Teresa at one point chris's mom like kind of we were we were in the car together and she even grabbed like my arm and like very adamantly was like you really need to make sure you're eating properly and now she sends me articles on proper nutrients and texts me to make sure I'm getting my calcium and so it at I really want like part of me is like I want to be like please fuck off like <laughs> I'm an adult and you're not my mother um but out of respect like she's just trying to come from respect so I think there is some heightened emotions as a pregnant woman when people are trying to push some boundaries especially if there's been boundary issues in the past. Yeah, I agree with that. That's uh, There is a couple of uh, eating stories in the future here and <laughs> yeah. uh, boundary pushing mother-in-law future in the in store for us in this episode. We're going to try and do... Um... I think I have a boundary pushing sister more than I have a boundary pushing <laughs> mother-in-law when it comes to the naming, the name of our baby. Kat is Kat. very, very interested. She is like gutted that we haven't told her Aww. and still sending me name um like yeah suggestions all the time and like not only the suggestions but her opinion on the suggestions <laughs> like, you considered noah we have actually yeah, yeah we did <laughs> i think this would be really cute um but we're keeping it a surprise for for everybody everybody will find out on the same day so. i like that that's cool yeah. It's gonna be fun. I think I'm going to not name Voldemort, but just he who shall not be named. I like that. It's cute. It's like cute. I think under certain circumstances that could be hilarious. No. And mm -hmm. it's just who said it. I think is what's angering yeah. her the most. Like if our best friend came up with that, it probably would have been funny. Yeah. But because she doesn't already like mother-in-law, then it's like, no, nah, this is not good. But we do have a. I have a naming story in the future. In the future of this episode, so do I. I thought you were going to say you have a name suggestion. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I love James. He, I like. He I literally like James. said on the ride. I was home. talking on the ride over. James I'm like, is, over. just so that we all are on the same page. James is vetoed. Ah, uh, I'm so sad because darn. Other, um, yeah, one of my best friends from like you know air cadets in college and mm -hmm. everything like that. His first son is a year. S old yeah, not a, no, he's six months. Well, yeah, so yeah. he will be a year when. Small fry arrives yeah. and I can't copy him. Completely over. understandable. So, yeah. It's just yeah. the more I was thinking of it, I was like, it's I was even name. thinking of Harry Potter because yeah. Harry's dad was James, right? Yeah. So I was kind of like, I thought of my story, then I, that's when I thought of James again. And I was like, oh, there's nobody in our family yeah. that's James. I know. Like, I've never, we haven't had anybody in our family that's James. So I'm like, yeah, James could be a good one. I hope they go with that. Yeah. It's, it was my first pick and it's back on the table if we have another boy. Jacob. <laughs> okay. Just came to my head. I don't know. Okay. No names. John. Because that was Franklin. Jay. Uh. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> okay. Chris likes Jason, actually. Chris tried to put Jason on the table early on. Anyway, yeah, that got smashed this is going to turn into a baby naming yeah. uh, we're, podcast real fast. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move along. I have a gift for both of you. So for all our followers who are on Spotify, make sure you guys check us out on YouTube and uh, check out this video on YouTube so you can see what these gifts are. Are you ready? Are you excited? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Nice plug. This one's for you. Ooh, watch the dog. This one's for you. Oh, I forgot he was there. Chris's Poor knee was Fred. going off Actually, Fred. the name on this present is Denver Katoon. Yes, because it got, <laughs> it got shipped to me. This, since this is not like a birthday gift, I didn't have to okay, wrap it. Are we going one at a time? Sure, yeah, let's go, Chris. Do one at a time. Okay, here we go. Black t-shirt, of which... World's okay, as dad. We can, we can obviously <laughs> tell I'm a big fan already. Cool dad's club. <laughs> Small on the front, big on the back. That's so Thanks, funny. Thanks, dude. This, hopefully I can live up to uh, the high expectations. Oh, you got this. Because, yeah. You're, I would, I would like you're to a be cool, cool dog dad. That'd be good. You, you've seen those, like, model airplanes, the RC airplanes? Mm -hmm. We strap strap them in that when they're young. No, no, we don't. Only, I've had a, a few buddies that have had those, and they crash them right away. Yeah, put a self-deploying <laughs> parachute on <laughs> They'll spend like literally like a month and a half trying to build this like thing. And they're grand. like, oh, it's like, yeah, and they're expensive too yeah. with the, the servos. And uh, yeah, they'll paint them all up and everything like that. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do a loop. Bang. That's like, what I did with dad. Smashed. Yeah. Dad brought, dad brought his down. 
um, to my house, our house. Um, and we went out to the park and within 40 seconds, I had crashed into a tree about like 60 feet up and we could never get it ever again. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. I thought it was going to match yours, but it's, it's one step above. Oh, it's a sweater? In my boy mom era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, this got, is I got so, that a while ago. This is so cute. I love that it's blue. It is quite large, though, Denver. I will say that. Well, you, you're, you're <laughs> what are you trying to large. say, Denver? <laughs> She's kind like, of large. You have oh. nonstop called me <laughs> robust. I thought rotund. I was complimenting you. <laughs> the first thing Denver but, said when she saw Madison today was, you are big. No, he said you're getting very round. <laughs> you're getting very yeah. round. Descriptive in my it's, bigness. Is your belly it's is very so round. This, this is meant to go over the bump, I guess, then? It's meant to wear and be okay. like a baggy at-home shirt. I, just like a casual, you need to throw something on, you don't care what you're wearing i do really like it because you're entering your boy mom era i like so. my boy mom era i uh yeah and we'll see if there's two i'm still waiting for all my uncle gear why are you looking at me <laughs> who's else gonna buy it for me <laughs> well, i'm my aunt gear <laughs> <laughs> all right after you babysit and change your dirty diaper oh, then i'll get you guys gear there we go <laughs> fair enough there we go. we'll get you some some embroidered uh, those like, milestones gear. yeah swag <laughs> all right I hope you guys enjoy your gifts. Thank you. I, I remember oh, like very kind. when when uh, when you guys first started dating, I asked to get you something, and Madison says he loves T-shirts that have funny writing on them. Yeah, literally all Christmas. he wears is. I was printed... like black T-shirts from the internet. I'm a big fan. Printed <laughs> T-shirts. And the... I, I have less of them now, but yeah, when we started dating, that was that was very very heavy in the rotation. <laughs> he has he has more adult clothing now. <laughs> All right, let's move along, get into the second story for all of our listeners. It's Teresa's turn. All right. Mine comes from Am I the Asshole? I was posted nine days ago. Am I the asshole for telling my parents and my pregnant sister that I will not baby proof my area of the house and saying that I will be locking them out instead? My parents live in my in law suite of my house. They pay rent to me, cover the mortgage, but the house is completely mine. Their rent is $600 a month. That includes all utilities, including internet and streaming services. My older sister is pregnant again. Yay. And she needs a place to stay <laughs> as her baby daddy bailed out and moved back to Romania without her. My parents agreed to let her stay with them. They did not ask me, but like I said, they pay rent and can do as they wish with their living area. My parents have full run of my house except for my bedroom and my office. My dad likes to putter in the garage and plays with my dog. My mom likes to bake in the kitchen and work in the garden. The basement has a kitchen, but is small, and mine is just better all around. Nope, they want me to baby-proof my levels of the house. I asked why I would need to do this, as the kids would 100% not be in my area. My mom said that it would not be fair to keep the kids cooped up in the basement all day. I said that there was a huge yard and a sunroom for, for them to spend time if they really wanted to. My sister said they couldn't spend all the time cramped up like that with three kids. I asked when she found out she was having twins. She shut up. I dragged it out of them that she said she was planning on watching her friend's toddler for money. I said I did not have insurance for her to run a business out of my house. She said it was all under the table and that she needed the money. This was when I said that I would be taking the keys to my area back from my parents and I was also going to change the locks. I said that I agreed to let my parents live with me to help them out. They agreed to let her move in because she is an irresponsible wench that can't understand birth control. I never agreed to let her use my house as a day home. I know I do not want three kids here along with four adults. Well, three adults and a pregnant dumbass. I thought this, but I did not say it. My mom is mad that I'm going to lock them out of my area, but my dad understands. The thing is, I would let him keep the key, but my mom would get it from him and she would give it to my sister. I said I would leave the garage lock the same, and that was good enough for him. My mom and my sister are upset and giving me the silent treatment. My mom got my dad to ask me if they paid for insurance if my sister could watch her friend's kid. I agreed, but I did say that they should give my sister to pay it. Am I the asshole? No. I feel like boundaries are going to be a bit of a theme <laughs> with these stories. I was like, yeah, you're not, you're being reasonable, but the fact that you, like the situation has like progressed to the point where you're having to like answer these questions, like obviously there has been breakdowns like yeah. Yeah. far beyond or before we got to this point, but cause yeah, you know, it's your own home. You definitely like have the, you know, right to 
draw certain boundaries and if yeah like an unlicensed business running out of your your thing that's not your responsibility to yeah take on under the table see i feel oh. like first half of that yes you're the asshole like your parents live with you your sister it's your family it's kind of how that goes obviously something has happened there but you are an asshole for saying i'm going to block you and your kids out of my house simply because you know you need a place to live soon as you bring in the unlicensed daycare, I'm like, okay, hold on. Now we're now I, now I'm like, okay, you're maybe not an asshole for not wanting an unlicensed business running out of your house. Cause that makes total sense. Not wanting your niece or nephew, like in your space and refusing and locking out your own family out of the space that you agree to rent. You're kind of an asshole. I think she doesn't have know. a good relationship with her sister. Though. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe don't live there then. Not the person who owns the house. Like everybody, maybe the family. She has a good relationship with her parents, yeah. but her right. parents mm. her parent, are yeah. taking in the daughter, the other yeah. sister. Her parents have rights to do what they want on their side of the house, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. But. And it's like, this is, this is my side of the house. They happen to be attached. Yeah. But I would like you to think of them more as separate apartments, mm-hmm. separate buildings. Yeah. I think OP is already doing a great job at like helping her parents. And then also, like, allowing her sister to stay there, but she's just putting a boundary in where she doesn't want that baby in her side of the house, which I think is fair. I think it's kind of fair because I feel like there's probably already negativity with the sister yeah. and with the sister being entitled, and it's going to lead to a lot of other shit. Right. She comes home from a long day at work. There's toys everywhere, dishes in the sink. It, I feel like she feels that her side of the house will just get abused. Yeah, and she didn't sign up to have a kid, so... Oh. I just i feel like i don't know i feel like if it were me i would be annoyed i i feel like i'm on i'm on op side yeah <laughs> well, lock, lock okay, madison in like, the basement kick the parents out like get your own place <laughs> that's kind of the thing i'm like if the whole situation isn't gonna work you don't have to have a bad relationship with your parents to say you know if you're taking in another person and those kids and now another kid this isn't going to be the same situation. We have to redraw the lines of the lease. Yeah, this or, is way yeah. more people. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want kids in your space. Then it's, it's two kids. They shouldn't live there. It's not. But if, I do think if you are going to say, okay, parents, sister, kids, you can live here, but how dare you cross this line? That feels a little bit assholey. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's like you have, she's saying you have all this other space. The, the Listen, it's a small basement apartment for you. If you want to invite the other daughter to live there with you, like that's your own choice. I don't recommend it. She already has a kid and now she has a baby. Yeah. Like that's too many people. But if you want to cram yourselves in there, that's fine. But don't expect me to be opening up my side and getting my house trashed because I know that's what my sister's going to do. You're right. also punishing four people when you're really just mad at one person, which is your sister. If you have a good relationship with your parents, but you're not pun- there's no you're reason not- to punish her kids either to be like the kids are locked in the basement now. Yeah, but not not giving up your personal space is not punishing anybody. That's, they're making their own choice to go there. But if the sister didn't live there and the parents say we're babysitting their grandchildren, would you have the same visceral reaction? Would you be like, you can't bring those grandchildren into my part of the house? That's fair. Right? Yeah. It seems to me like she's upset with her sister. Mm, and see. the parents are going to be, the parents are trying to help their daughter and the kids. The kids didn't do anything. And she's yeah. saying, you can't come upstairs. You're stuck in the basement. This is my space. So it, the punishment is going to four people when really it's one person that is she's upset with and there's some therapy that should be brought into play. Yeah. Mm. I see what you're saying. I see <laughs> so what you're that's saying. usually the solution Just, for a lot uh, of these stories. Work it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, there, uh, is there an update or top comment? Um, overall, though, is not the asshole. Top comment. Not the asshole, but you may have to reconsider this whole arrangement. <laughs> you know, over time, this will become a mess for you. Your mom, sister, and kids will take over your space, and it will be very hard to rectify after they are here. Ask your parents to move out, although I feel sorry for your dad. OP responds... Locks are changed. I will not bend or break on this. So, kind of what the we deed were saying. is done. Yeah. That's aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Always leave it to the redditors to give, have a hot take in the top comment there. <laughs> yeah, that's all. All right, moving oh, along. Wait, do we vote on asshole or not asshole at the end of this? The internet has already. The internet that. says I'm, not an asshole, so <laughs> I'm the outlier who thinks she's a little bit of an asshole. Apparently. I'm sure people will agree with you in the comments. Oh, yeah. Nobody tell them my address. You're entitled to your opinion. 
There's no, yeah, there's no like, uh, uh, no right and wrong here. Yeah, nuance on the internet. It's like either full asshole or totally exonerated. It's not like, eh, you know, <laughs> they, there's good people on both sides. That's not how that works. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to have very good, like, I'm not going to get very many likes because I'm like, all about that mediation. Like, yeah, how no, can no, we no. make it's this not, work? <laughs> all right, moving along. This one is from Am I the Asshole from one month ago. Am I the asshole for being too harsh with my neurodivergent sister in law? I recently gave birth to a baby boy. He's now six months old, and I can easily say I've never felt so happy. I will often call my son the cutest thing that I've ever seen. He always giggles and smiles in response. It really is the cutest thing. I never once thought it would be controversial for me to do this, but I got into a fight with my sister-in-law a couple of days ago over this. We were at a dinner, and after a while, my son started to cry, so I started doing the thing I mentioned above. He immediately stopped crying. I then handed him off to my husband so I could finish eating. My husband then walked over to the window so he could keep our kid entertained. My sister-in-law then suddenly made a comment about how my son is definitely not the cutest thing she has ever seen. <laughs> I was quite a little put off by this, but I just shrugged it off. Am I the asshole for going to jail for murdering my sister-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was like reasonably, like statistically though, this kid is probably not the, the cutest thing ever. Like let's be, <laughs> let's be totally serious. Like I'm sure that there are people out there that think that Fred is not that cute. We are, I, I know, we're going on a tangent. I'm allowed to like add some color. <laughs> Which no, so? Fred is the cutest dog in the entire world. Fred just is saying, the statistically, cutest dog. this probably is the cutest kid in the world. Okay, we'll just no, move on. You're our right. Cat, our cats are cuter. Well, that's a different species. That's totally fine. All right, fine. <laughs> you know, he is a pretty cute dog. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue on with the Sorry. story. We're almost Carry done. Up. That seemed to bother her, and she went on to say, He's actually quite boring to look at. In <laughs> fact, most babies are. You can't possibly think he's the cutest thing ever, right? I said she's entitled to her own opinion and that I really do believe he's a cutie, but that only managed to make her more frustrated and she tried making it her goal for me to admit that my baby really isn't that cute. <laughs> now, sister-in-law is 19 and is neurodivergent. I'm not the most educated, but my mother-in-law said that's why she was so obsessed with the whole thing. I didn't really think about that in the moment, and I told her to knock it off and stop talking to me in a super harsh tone. She immediately went quiet and ran to sit by her mom. She then proceeds to glare at me and my son for the rest of the night. After my mother-in-law yelled at me over this, my sister-in-law has been making social media posts about being <laughs> discriminated against by family members. So am I the asshole? Oh my God. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know how. Like, I've never. I don't have any, any like neurodivergent friends or family, so I don't know how. Um, they react in social situations like that, or if they're like truly like very set on um, a, a specific topic, and they need to. They need so hard to like express it that way. So I can't really say if she like the she's the asshole yeah i don't know, you know what i mean because i don't i don't really know like it is definitely a harsh thing to say and it's a harsh thing to hear and i i would definitely react to that same way that op did i don't think op is an asshole no no i don't no, think no, she's no. an asshole it's but i mean at the same time it's like it's not asshole right they're just dealing in like facts yeah yeah, and yeah. it's like listen the, i don't find your child like objectively <laughs> yeah. like you and Which that's is fine. fine. And but I like, objectively as... find my child the cutest <laughs> fucking thing ever. I mean, we're, we're both talking opinions. about subjective things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. I yeah. had a friend one time when I was going to college who said to his group of friends, um, I'm not going to miss any of you. I'm just going to miss my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> as we were at this breakfast, like, um, you know, saying goodbye. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you're a big asshole. And I really, but we were, we were 17, right? right? Like yeah. we, Asperger's. Yeah. And it's mm. like, that's the thing. You, you know, we don't realize it in the moment um, that that was kind of, you know, he was, things are normal, things are normal. And he makes these like stupid offhand comments and he didn't get it. And it would take days. And then finally I was like, you said a really rude thing to a bunch yeah. of people. That's why no one's talking to you. And he's like, what did I say? Yeah. And I was like, you said you're going to miss your dogs more than us. He goes, 
Yeah, <laughs> but I this am. Is, this <laughs> is a fact. Like he could not comprehend it, and so I just was like, "Okay, we just have to walk away from this." He very clearly isn't intentionally yeah. trying yeah. to hurt. It's just their social cues. It's just yeah. social cues. That's, exactly. That's what Chris yeah. said. Like that was a fact to yeah. him that he needed to blurt out in yeah. the moment um, as he stood up to say thanks for <laughs> getting this brunch together. Um, so I I understand like both sides of it, but also yeah. like. <laughs> Also, don't, none of you are as cute as this baby. Already. Don't get in the way of a mom and her baby. I like right? what the hell? Yeah, I also feel like this. She's had. It's her sister, right? Sister in law. Oh, sister in law. Okay, so she's probably had to deal with like other, other comments. Yeah, from yeah. her. So she. She's definitely said something outlandish yeah. at like a Thanksgiving dinner at yeah. some point, right? This like, can't be the first time. So and she's finally probably just like sticking up for herself. I don't think it's very right for the mother-in-law to yell at her over no. this. Yeah. No, that's yeah. OP is not an asshole. No. No, but objectively. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. You know, it's really funny. I was like, wow, another baby story. Wow. And then I forgot it's a whole baby. <laughs> they're all, they're all baby story. Baby rain. <laughs> Should I mix in my flight one now on the next one? Should I put it in the middle or save it to the end? Uh your show man do whatever you want <laughs> all right well the top comment on this one is not the asshole yeah. um it's her feelings her feelings are hers to manage and uh the person did comment on that one and says i'm neurodivergent and i think babies look like potatoes <laughs> <laughs> some of them do but i don't tell the mother that i think her baby looks like a potato <laughs> i think there's different uh points of the spectrum yeah, yeah. so no, there's definitely different <laughs> it depends. uh points and it's just yeah, people don't realize what the social cues of what you can say and not say, and they yeah. have to. It takes longer for them to learn that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving along. Don't All call right. my baby a potato. Anybody in this room? You mean he who shall not be named? We won't say it to your yeah. face. <laughs> okay. But his head looks like a potato. <laughs> She's not getting any cool ant gear. <laughs> Denver and I always say we think babies are ugly. <laughs> Babies are ugly, I think, mm. until they start to, like, gain weight and fill out, like, three, yeah. four months. Sometimes They're I really... find babies really cute. But yeah. sometimes, a lot, most they, babies are kind babies, of Babies, newborn babies, though, oh, well, yeah, most are they're scary wrinkly looking. Yeah. little yeah. sunken yeah, 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 in, like, yeah. wrinkly, weird little, like, beings. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, like, four months to a year. Yeah. Then they're yeah. super yeah. fucking cute. They get fat. Because James, James took until he was, like, six months, five months. Like, just before we went to Whistler, he was yeah. six months in Whistler. So it was, like, yeah. the five-month mark when all of a sudden... He started to get the like fill in his cheeks and like and they, all of a yeah. sudden they can make expressions too, right? So yeah. like he, yeah. he's smiling mm. and it's like okay, this is objectively yeah. not when not subjectively anymore. This is objectively adorable. <laughs> yeah. When they can make facial expressions and hold their head on their own, yeah, the holding the head on the own thing gets me too. That's I don't really I like. I don't want to have a baby who can't hold his head. It like makes me scared. I know it scares me. Yeah, it still sounds scary. Oh. At least you didn't get us best parent of the ward shirt or best parent shirts. We got cool parent shirts. <laughs> You're yeah, trying. The, the jury's still out on that one. We don't know yet. <laughs> I'm afraid to hold a baby that can't lift its own head. This is going to be really good for you and I there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving along. This one comes from Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for telling my mother-in-law she won't be seeing my baby after throwing a baby shower for herself? <laughs> <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> Interesting. Where is this going? My husband and I are expecting our first child. We moved to be closer to his family. I'm no contact with mine. My mother in law has been referring to the baby as her baby this entire time. She will say things like, I can't wait for my baby to be born. My baby is going to be so loved. This rubs me the wrong way for reasons I cannot explain, but my husband tells me to ignore her. Can't explain it, really? <laughs> <laughs> my mother-in-law wanted to throw me a baby shower and invite her friends. She said she made an agreement a long time ago that they would celebrate each other's kids' weddings and births. My husband and I eloped and declined a reception for her friends since we don't know them. My mother-in-law told me that I owed it to her to let her throw the baby shower since I hurt her friend's feelings by not having a wedding reception. I asked if I could invite my friends and she said no. That this was for her friends, and that if my friends wanted to throw me a baby shower, they could. I reluctantly agreed. My husband and I spent hours on our registry, and my mother-in-law asked for it so she could share with her friends. She said she forwarded the registry on. 
She asked me what design I wanted on my cake and cookies. I told her flowers because I'm decorating the nursery in a garden theme. At the shower, they provided me with a mother-to-be sash and my mother-in-law a granny-to-be sash to wear. I noticed that the theme of the shower was circus animals. The cake had an elephant and balloons on it, and the cookies were animals. At first, I thought that maybe the floral theme was just too difficult, so I rolled with it until it was time to open the presents. Every present was some sort of circus animal. Onesies, blankets, toys, nothing on my registry. I was a little confused and even went so far to check my registry to make sure I didn't goof up and change everything. I thanked everyone for the gifts and tried to sound as gracious as possible, but I was so confused. My husband, who is a little less tactful than I am, showed up at the end of the shower and noticed the theme right away. He goes, what's up with the circus animals? He looks at the presents and says, this isn't what we asked for. Then he looked at his mom and says, mom, what did you do? She smiled and said, I didn't like the theme you chose for my baby. I'm going to decorate my baby's nursery at my house with circus animals, so I created a registry for myself. My husband said, (laughs) you did what? She says, my baby is going to need a room at my house, so I threw a shower for myself. I lost my composure and told her that she would not see my baby and to stop calling the baby hers, and my husband told his mom that she's delusional if she thinks we're going to allow this. She started crying and said we are just withholding her baby from her. We've been getting texts from his family since the shower, calling us selfish and ungrateful and saying we ruined her joy of being a grandma. Are we the asshole? No. What? No. Psychotic. Boundaries. So I want to go back to that. (laughs) (laughs) Also, like... to bring that back up. Expectations. Safety, (laughs) too, right? Safety. Just because that she's your like his mother and your husband's mother doesn't mean that she's not crazy enough to steal your kid. Oh, abduction. Like it's, it's sounding crazy and you have to go with your gut on that kind of stuff because you just don't know. Yeah. She is truly delusional. She sounds like if you got into an argument one time while she had your Mm -hmm. kid, you would come home and the doors would be locked and she'd be like, no, you're not like, it sounds like an potentially unsafe environment to have your kid in. Could even be like, uh, be like ozarks where they just cut the baby right out of her <gasps> no seriously okay oh so the the internet tells you like you know like facebook marketplace obviously you're buying a lot of the baby stuff online and going to people's houses and it's like you have to be very careful pregnant women shouldn't go and buy stuff on facebook marketplace you mm. should send your partners or your friends um because some of them are traps to take women in and holy like, holy take shit. your baby and i was like What's oh my Oh my gosh. Like I didn't even, like, I, I mean, we live in a very safe neighborhood in a safe country, but it's like, it's Never things know. to think about. So on yeah. that note, yeah. Good. So wow. I, I, I think about women, people taking my baby from inside of me. Oh sometimes. my God. That's New fear most. unlocked. Yeah. If wow. you're ever meeting up with somebody off of Facebook or could you to buy something, a good location is always just meet them at a police station. The police yeah. actually encourage it now. They've I've seen some social media posts where they're like, hey, this is our designated parking spots to like exchange to buy items off hmm, of people wow. so you can know that you're safe and stuff. It was like a police officer was saying like outside of his precinct, like if you ever want a safe place, I'm meeting up at like Walmart or anything, just meet at a police station. Yeah. Nobody's going to mess you up and they fuck, won't fuck show. you over yeah. outside of a police station yeah. if they have any bad intentions or anything, right? I drove to a guy's like warehouse in like Brampton one time to sell a PS4. <laughs> so yeah, I should have used that advice. Well, I've done some sketchy <laughs> shit selling some stuff. I've sold a lot of stuff on I Facebook drew, and I drew a super hard bargain with that guy too. Was, <laughs> he's like, how about this? I was like, how about not? <laughs> um, back to the post though. Absolutely. They're not assholes. Yeah. You no. have to, you have to protect your own sanity and protect your child. That's just outrageous. Like completely changed the theme. The fact that she wanted to throw a baby shower without her being invited. I wouldn't have even said yes. I, I would- wouldn't have even like my friends are not allowed that's not my yeah. baby shower then why am i no no thank you exactly also what kind of like rational human being wants to do a circus theme <laughs> yeah, there's, Red flag right there. your, your there's probably right there. fucking yeah. clowns everywhere too <laughs> <laughs> it there is so many red flags it is very um like odd that she is saying my baby yeah. and a nursery in my house I don't think anybody in like reasonable does a full on nursery in right? their, mm-hmm. if they're not your baby, like aunt, uncle, grandparent, like, yeah. you know, 
your parents will have some stuff. They'll kind of like modify. Yeah, we'll have some like set up there that they can watch our kid, but mm-hmm. we don't have to bring everything. Mm-hmm. Same with the dog. They have dog toys at their house, but they yeah. don't have like... A doggy broom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be very surprised if like they got like... Somebody was like, I'm going to not like only, not only pictures give, of Fred on the wall, <laughs> not only give the kid a room, but decorate it. It's one thing if you have an extra room mm-hmm. and you can be like, okay, I'll just put this in put here, but to start painting a room for your grandkid yeah. is going to be there. What? One night a month. Yeah. Like that's strange. Apparently she thinks more, more. Yeah. Yeah. Any update? Um, no updates, but overall vote, not the asshole, obviously no. yeah. not the asshole poo mode. It says, <laughs> what's that? I think it's like very strongly oh. not the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um, top comment, not the asshole. Make sure if she has keys to your home, locks are changed. Yeah. Make sure you invest in security cameras. Let the hospital know your mother-in-law is to be nowhere near your baby. Let them know you and your husband are the only two that fill out any paperwork. <laughs> Honestly, no contact from the start. That way she has no grandparent visitation <laughs> case. Document every creepy thing she does. Call your doctor and tell your pediatrician at the time to password protect your medical information. Your mother-in-law is unhinged, and this has hands the rock the cradle vibes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never thought like to go that far. Literally, to, like, they're like locked down the yeah. hatchet. This is this chick could be psycho. But it makes we, sense. Full coming. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, people are. You crazy. never know until you it's too late. Know. You don't know until yeah. it's too late. You have to follow your your gut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Definitely uh, install some security cameras. Just so you guys know, these uh, Reddit stories very hard to read sometimes. <laughs> Typing that these people put on the internet it's atrocious. It's shameful. Yeah. You mean they're not English majors? <laughs> exactly. Like missing periods and commas, and we gotta fill in the the gaps here. Listen, yeah. but if you really need a restaurant recommendation, Reddit has got you covered most of the time. Yeah. Yes, I used it for uh, a lot of our Cali. Yeah. Cali recommendations. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like to do Google reviews, and I've had like 13 people following my Google reviews account. Ooh. I, <laughs> Nerd. I do a lot of Google <laughs> reviews. I review everything. Hey, you know what, though? I, call, like, I call you a nerd, but I read. I I go on those like stars. I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm pick, coming up on level 18, yeah. I think. I'm like. Damn. I'm, I've am i got a lot of points. I'm, yeah. I'm a high level. I won't go to a restaurant unless it's like a 4.4 or above, so. Standards. Yep. I think when we're touring in our RV, we'll have to like purposely go to like oh. some one star review restaurant and see how bad it is to make a video. Uh, I don't think you need to die of food poisoning in your 30s. There's a, <laughs> there's a YouTube uh, channel, this guy that went through and did all the like one star reviews. Yeah, yeah stuff. I've seen some. He, huh. he, went to, like, he went to go get a one star haircut. He went to a one star strip club. He went to a one star like, flying school. Like it's it's actually pretty good. Okay, that flying school. <laughs> cool. What's going on? Hey, that listen, one, I mean, one star wait, haircut. No on. big deal. Does anybody want to look up the reviews of the flying school I used to teach at? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have one-star fly schools in Canada. Okay, we won't we won't name any names here. We'll just look. We'll just see what the what the actual review of it is. Oh, you know what? Actually, four point three. So I I can't That's even. That's pretty good. I was not expecting that <laughs> at all. Um, wasn't expecting a one. But can, I would, can we identify that? I would 4.3? say like if it, no, if it was in the twos, right, that fine. wouldn't surprise me at all. So if you're ever looking for a new job, check the Google <laughs> reviews of the employment place before you go to get a good idea of what you're walking into. I checked them on my on my current work before I started working there at Porsche downtown. And it was like four point something. I was like, okay, that's normal for a dealership. The other day they had this dude walked around my dealership and he was doing like an audit. He had like a face mask up and he was walking around with like a camera phone and he just like goes around on public sidewalks and records people until they get pissed off and they come assault him. And then he posts it on the internet to get like bait clicks and views and stuff. Jeez. Yeah. There's a guy at my work who's like uh, a consultant and he like went out and like smacked the camera. <laughs> And then I'm like, this dude's going to post a video. So like he was still walking around and I went out and I like had a conversation with him just trying to be nice, just trying to like represent my dealership in a good way. Like, Hey, we're all not piece of shit Porsche salespeople in here <laughs> because this dude isn't even on the staff board. He's like helping us with moving to our new location. This dude, he used to be on like the Toronto, like city council or something like that. And then uh, a couple of days later, I'm the thumbnail on this dude's video. <laughs> Crazy Porsche person attacks. And we had people like leaving one star Google reviews on our oh, on our no. dealership page. And people were calling in and they're like, I'll never buy a car from there again. People are sending in emails and stuff. 
Yeah, it was pretty funny. And then like in the comments, people are like, oh, that's Denver. Like Denver's trying to like get a sale and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, that's Denver. He, you know, he's a nice guy from like, I, I watch him on his YouTube. And oh, he's pretty famous on TikTok and stuff. And a bunch of the comments are just like, oh, there's Denver trying to get another sale. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. But yeah, there's like hammering the Google reviews. Just a bunch of one-star Google reviews flooded in. It makes a big difference. Yeah. I, it I, does. I, I love the, when I look up restaurants and stuff, I like to check out the pictures of the food. The Google reviews. Oh, me too. Yeah. So whenever we go and we make our TikToks or food, I always try to like take pictures of them as well. And then I can post all the pictures. So like when we did our Cali trip, like every single place I went to, we did the reviews. My one review I did of this like barbecue place, I think it got like over like 50,000 views. Like I get like notifications once in a while being like, your photo has been seen 50,000 times. I was like, what? The phone eats first. That's the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. The phone with us, we're influencers. The phone, the <laughs> phone like, does eat first. Chris has like a camera roll full of. Um, meals that already have a quarter eaten. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. Usually, I'm like the phone eats the second or third. <laughs> we'll get I, so excited to start eating, and then when he's like, "Oh, this is really good," I'm going to take a photo of it. <laughs> I start eating, and she's like, "Wait, wait!" <laughs> Always, never fails. We're we're like official influencers now. I don't know if you guys know that yeah. Pizza Hut hired us. We're going to be we influencers heard, yeah. after this launches. Yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. Like, Do you guys want to read a story? Read a story. Yeah, do you want to read a story? You don't have to. I can, hey, I can give you my laptop. It like, doesn't matter. We'll see how you do, Chris. Right, let's see. Okay. I already have my opinion because I can creep over the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so am I the asshole for telling my friend she is ruining her child's life with the name she gave her? <laughs> you guys so, really want to know the name <laughs> i have another name story too coming up <laughs> yeah there's been a bit of a theme eh? uh so i 21 female have been friends with lauren 22 female for 17 years now and we're really close she recently gave birth to her daughter and her and her husband recently told us the name they decided to name their da- oh my god <laughs> I'm the only one just got to read a little bit further. They decided to name their daughter Juliet, pronounced Juliet, but spelt G H I U L I Y E T T E. And her middle name. You have to see that to understand. <laughs> yeah. that. I'm like trying to picture it. But... <laughs> so... Again, when I say it, it doesn't make as much sense. Her middle name is Maria, spelt M A H R I Y A. <gasps> I thought the spelling was a joke until she told me <laughs> they are serious. Oh my God. I told her that the spelling of a simple but beautiful name is going to ruin this little girl's life. <laughs> she got mad at me and told me to stop ruining her mood and that I was mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely honest. The spelling is just bad. Nothing else can explain it. Why ruin such a beautiful name by including letters that don't belong there? These are all reasonable questions. I texted her yesterday and told her that the little girl will try to change her name or at least go by her middle name since it's a normal. She told me to stop texting her and that I'm a bad friend and that I'm being an asshole for making fun of the name. I don't think I am. When I told her that the spelling is just bad, she went crazy. She told me that I'm the worst friend ever. This is a friend of 17 years, by the way. Uh... Worst friend ever, and that I would never be able to see her daughter again. After that, her husband sent an email telling me to stop being so disrespectful. Email. The spelling is cute, and it just makes her unique. Unique? Yes. But that's just going to make that little girl suffer, and she'll probably be bullied for the spelling. I haven't replied, and honestly, I don't think I'm an asshole here. But I think I'd ask Reddit, since y'all are the best judge. So... Am I the asshole for telling my friend that the name she gave her daughter is bad and will ruin her life? <laughs> Am I the asshole? I think you're doing her a favor. I think no. so. But Madison, how do you feel about this? Because you are the pregnant one with the bun in your oven. So how would you feel if you were coming up with a weird name and you thought it was cool because it was unique? Yeah. If this we, person what if, is... if it was like G I A Y M? Yes, for James. I was like, what does that even spell? G Giamis? Giamis. <laughs> um yeah, no, you're not an ass. This person is an aggressive person. Um, you're not an asshole for thinking that it's the wrong spelling. You're an asshole for 
you know, inserting yourself in a situation into an opinion that is not your opinion to have. Like you can't tell somebody how they should spell their own child's name. But but she's been friends with her for 17 years. Don't you think if you were the best friend of 17 years, you have a duty, a moral <laughs> obligation to like rein it in a little bit. So yeah. like tell your friend to rein it in because you see that kid getting bullied in school. Wait, is the ba- has the baby been born? No, I don't think so. Recently gave birth to her. Yeah, daughter. no, oh. you're toast. You're done. Oh, it's done. Oh. The moment that like, if that's okay, yeah. If you're saying if she came to you while she was pregnant and yeah. said this is what we're thinking, and you want to give your opinion, by all means, go for it. If she hands you your baby, her baby, and says this is the name, nope. No, your that's opinions 100% are done. Yeah. yeah, you're done. I think so. Like that's the thing. That's not your place. But what if she and didn't never had any time before? That woman, you're making her feel incredibly guilty for probably something that took a lot of time. It's really stupid, but people name their kids stupid things all the yeah. time. It is a beautiful name. It's just a shitty spelling. This lady thinks that M A H R I Y A is a normal yeah, spelling for Maria too. Yeah. Like, I, say, just I don't know. Little... I don't know if we can. But that's it's like more. Mariah, almost. Yeah. More than Maria. Ma- but Ra- yeah, I guess so. It sucks as a person. I think every person in this room probably spells their name every time they have to like talk on the phone to somebody. Yeah. Um, you imagine. Yeah. Like as like I have actually you know what that kid's going to have to do is she's going to have to say my name is Juliet but it's spelled like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like most people know how Juliet is spelled but now every single time she has to say it's Juliet spelled like this. And it's funny because like sometimes people put an extra D in my name but I won't correct that unless it's a bill. Right. People Mm -hmm. put two D's in your name. Yeah. How many people before you got married how many people put replace the second you and our last name with an o 50 50 even after saying like 80 that's so 20 weird. every single time i get a new job i still have a login on my porsche account <laughs> that's with a fucking o i'm like come on i'm like can you fix this manager's like no you can't fix it once it's created it's created i'm like there's no editing oh, you, should, like, you should probably change your no. driver's license actually at this point <laughs> and then people think i'm portuguese because if it ends with an o it's a portuguese last name mm. people think he's italian because it's all for the time. Ga- for gala for, for gala. gala yeah, yeah. super italian. ukrainian but yeah italian all the time yeah <laughs> no sorry i was gonna answer that no, please yeah, is she an asshole? yes if the baby is born you're an asshole just shut up and take it it's not your kid i do agree with madison no. i do agree with it top but comments. not a hundred percent disagrees with you top comment hi i'm a high school teacher i'll tell you up front <laughs> that you're right Kids with fucked up spellings of names are miserable about three quarters of the time. It's difficult to spell. People mispronounce them. And official documents? Forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> all, all one word. <laughs> and we definitely judge parents. <laughs> we don't think their kids' names looking like they just picked 10 random Scrabble tiles out of the box are cute and unique. We think their parents are stupid and immature. <laughs> Like contestants on an early 2000s reality show, like Flavor of Love or something. (laughs) It's a great show. (laughs) It's one of the ways we clock parents is potentially difficult. (laughs) I keep in touch with three students who have changed their names from their parents' spellings to just actually conventional spellings Mm -hmm. the minute they turned 18. (laughs) That kid will be Juliet Maria as soon as she possibly can, not the asshole. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting take because like you kind of think, okay, you kind of are the asshole be like going so headstrong. The baby has already been named. You're kind of an asshole for telling your friend that's a terrible name. And then you have like a high school teacher who's like, I deal with this shit all the time. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. I think it's stupid, but like, it's a little bit too late. Like it they've already, they've already yeah. done it. Like if it was different, if they were like, you know, they were running baby names by you when they were pregnant yeah. and stuff. But once they've already put the birth certificate down, it's just like, well, yeah, like you can think that's stupid and keep it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> one of my buddies. It's like, it's not enough to be right. And in this case, she's right. <laughs> yeah. But the timing is totally wrong. Yeah. You can be right, but it doesn't mean you need to tell people you're right. There's probably yeah. a reason your friend didn't tell you the name before they had the baby. Yeah. You'd think that's after true. 17 years and stuff. I... I'm, I've known you for 30. I'm not <laughs> telling you the name. Are we, are you naming it? Are we giving it Juliet with these weird Conventional spellings. spellings. Perfect. R Z W. <laughs> Bro, what are you on? Must name is kids? Like oh, just yeah. letters it's not even or something? A, yeah, oh. those are, they're symbols. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, not no. a fan of that. But Baby like, boy will whatever. have a conventionally spelt 
normal name. I have a question up for a name for you on the next one. If it's a girl, mm -hmm. what do you think about the name Valentine? Negative. And then you just nickname her Val all the time. Why wouldn't I just name her Valerie? Valerie. <laughs> I'm just being left hanging. <laughs> I'm just being left hanging over here. Chris is going for the Chris bump. This bump and Chris is not noticing. Sorry, no, it's really funny. Actually, I will say, um, speaking previously to like James being a, a top name for us and then having to um, make a left turn there, Pivot. we got to a point, thank you, we got to a point where we had kind of narrowed it down and I was like, all of these names, our baby's going to have the exact same life. It won't matter. Like his yeah. direction of life is not going to matter between any of these names. That's true. So it really helped me kind of take the pressure off like the perfect name. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very strong, conventional. Like if it's a baby name, an adult name, like nothing is going to be weird there. And that's how it made me feel like really easy and calm to pick a name because mm -hmm. it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Pressure I didn't think I'd feel. Yeah. I don't know what your plan is exactly because you keep it to yourself that's fine i i just feel like it, it might be a good idea to like I, i'm not having a kid but i feel like have a like a short list and then like once he's in your arms what yeah. feels right like you said not none of the names are going to make a drastic change with his life so it's like okay if you have like three or four names that are like these are kind of our favorites we're not sure which one and then you're like he's in your arms and you're like okay what do you what do you think what, what does this little fucker look like <laughs> i've heard there's some parents that like what do does that, this little yeah. potato yeah. look yeah. like we're not monogramming anything you're doing a name on the wall mm -hmm. because of that and we're not and that's i mean that i think the big reason why i didn't want to tell anyone is because the opinions I couldn't handle Everybody the opinions. Has their opinions. Yeah. I try to be minimal opinion. Yeah. But a lot what are you of talking people... about? <laughs> Listen, I'm, no, you I... have a podcast dedicated to opinion. I'm, <laughs> saying, your opinion. I'm just saying I, I, I like James and that's my opinion, but I'm not going to be like, you need to name him James yeah. or Noah's a bad name. Like, I, I'm just like, oh, like whatever you choose. Like, I don't know. I like to like. I, I, there's nothing wrong with having an opinion. It's about how you um, uh, share your opinion. I mm -hmm, feel like yeah. don't don't want to be too aggressive. So whatever you guys are going to do with it, I'm all I'm support it no matter what. Doesn't mean I don't have ideas. But the other reason is exactly what you just said. It's like a lot what of people if we change don't our know. mind. Yeah. What if we get them home and you have I think seven days. Oh, to oh. fill change out it. the birth certificate. Um, so it's like you just if you look at him and you don't know that that name is going to fit. And, you know, you. Although nobody should take my opinion in the first couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. True. It's also not a bad idea to give your kid a middle name too, because there's a. I, I know a lot of like a couple of my friends growing up, um, like Clayton. You remember Clayton? Mm -hmm. Clayton's not his first name. I'm mm. pretty sure. I think. I'm pretty sure it's his middle name. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty okay. sure Clayton was his middle name. Well, Chris's dad goes by his middle name. Yeah, like a lot of people. Some people prefer to go by their middle name when they're kids. They just that's what they prefer. Yeah. Fun fact, Teresa doesn't have a middle name. I do not. She has four. <laughs> <laughs> Don't no, I, you? I'm just Teresa. Aren't Santa. you religious? Well, yeah, my family is. Weren't you confirmed? Yeah. So you have a religious name? Not that I know yeah, you're of. You're supposed to have a confirmation, name if, have a confirmation name if you get confirmed Catholic when you're 12. Or... We were just talking about confirmations the other day. Have I been, have we been confirmated? I confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> confirmation. Fuck off. That whiskey and Coke that Chris poured you in. Yeah, it's going to my head now. Um, I am confirmed. Kat and I are confirmed because we had to get confirmed to go to a Catholic high school. What about me? I went to a Catholic high school. Then you are confirmed. Oh. At least, um, yeah, Kat, I know Kat and I are confirmed. And yeah, because my confirmation name is Elizabeth. I have I no idea what name. my confirmation name is. My middle name is Mary after grandma. I'm so confused. What's Kat's middle name? Ce Celia. Cecilia. Mm -hmm. After other grandma. I was telling Teresa, after we get married, she can make her last name her middle name. Why would you want to do that? I never do that. <laughs> In what world would I do that? Well, we're not hyphenating it, so. Yeah, it's just going to be don't... Teresa Katu. Yeah, but if you wanted to keep your last name, you could make it your middle name. No. Yeah. All right, should we get to the update of this one? All right, update number one, as mentioned. All right, I get it. I'm an asshole for going after the name more than once. Sorry for that, LMAO. I just sent her an apology text for doing it, yet I did write how she should try to look at it from another perspective. I also sent a few screenshots of comments just for her to see what other people think of it. FYI, I'm supposed to be the godmother, which uh, is why I was extra worried. LMAO, my bad. <laughs> Update. Number two. Hello again. I've been asked if there are any updates, and yes, there are. So I've been talking with Laureen. Actually, 
eh, it's spelled normally, L-O-R-E-E-N, a lot over text. And she's slowly starting to notice her mistake. I apologized again, and we are good again. We talked about the name, and she told me that she won't change it and really loves it, but is slowly understanding why it is weird for others, especially me. Her husband, on the other hand, is still pretty mad at me. He has, he thinks I took it too far and that my apologies aren't from the heart. And she does shrug emoji. I've been asked if I'm still the godmother and yes, I am. There are thoughts of changing it, but now we get along again and I'm back in my role. Back to the husband. He actually blocked me everywhere. <laughs> and he's telling Lorene, Lorene to do so too, because he thinks I'm manipulating and that I'm lying just so that we can be close again. Doesn't make sense. I don't know. Well, either way, it's getting better with the relationship, not just with the name. Thanks, crazy lady on the internet. <laughs> Bye, crazy lady on the internet. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a tough one because it's like, do you want your kid to have a different name that's kind of sticks out from the rest? Like, I'm Madison and I, I feel like both can feel on that on some level. Like, Madison is not an uncommon name. It's a little bit more on the unique side. Denver is a super rare name. I've only yeah, ever met. Yeah, you definitely more than me. Yeah, two yeah. people. Like, I know Chris is normal. That's a normal name. Teresa, normal name. So, Madison and I are kind of, like, on the outsides. Yeah, I, the, that's kind of what I was saying. Like, I've spelt, I spent my whole life spelling my name. And I have a not even that uncommon name compared to this woman. And the fact that when I say my name, you know, and maiden name into married name, I have to say it. And everybody just goes, yeah, can you spell that? She's yeah. going to say her name, but then have to add like an asterisk to it. Always. Every time. She'll always she have to spell it. She has a normal it. name, a normal sounding name. Yeah. And the weirdest, and she's going to have to spell it multiple times. Yeah. I had to Everybody's read it be on like, the what? screen to be able to follow along with how, what you were reading out. Like, I think there's got to be a limit between the name being unique yeah. and the name just going too far. And I think this is an instance where it's gone too far. Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, honestly, Juliet is kind of more of a uniquer name to it's begin an older with. Name. Yeah, yeah, it's an yeah. older name. So I feel like that's already kind of like unique for our time frame. Like, but spelling it weird is that you are creating so much difficulty for your kid's life. Every single time she's gonna have to spell it out. Like at least with us, it's like it, it's more unique and there's a little bit of a challenge there, but like at least the spelling isn't yeah. super weird. Like I just kind of get confused with like Dennis or um Dallas sometimes well, and stuff we're like that. After cities and, we're, exactly. and it's spelt like the city. Exactly. So it's not like there's an extra N or D. Like, you know, it worst case scenario, you're like spell it like the city. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I say that all the time. I'm like Denver like the city. Yeah. That's exactly what I say. Yeah. But so many times people after I if I don't say that and I just say, Oh, I'm Denver, like especially in sales and like they're like, Oh, I thought it was Dennis, or they'll call me Dennis. Like I've been on a couple of test drives, they're like, Oh, we've got Dennis back there. I'm like Wait, <laughs> your, your, kid, your kid's name is Dennis? This is a girl. <laughs> One time that happened. I get Madeline a lot. Yeah. Madeline, oh, like a lot, sure. a lot, a that lot. That makes sense. Um, people's brains just like hardwire in that name for me. So, I didn't know. Sorry. I didn't know Madison was a, an uncommon name. No, I, I, I won't say that. Mad like Madison is popular, but Madison because like the 10th most popular name in 2000. So 10 years after oh. I was born. So I think now it's quite a popular okay. name. And I will say, like, if we're going name bashing here, um, you know, I I don't hate my name, but I don't love my name because it aged me. And that's not mm. my mom's fault. She didn't know when I was named Madison in 1990. It was very unique. There was a, a mermaid um, movie. I don't know the name of the movie. Um, but in the Little Mermaid. No, no, no. <laughs> no, about a, it's a real life woman in New York and she's a mermaid. They find her in the Hudson. A fish named Wanda. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, and I'm out of fish movies. She she is a <laughs> she jumps out and like becomes a person with legs, looks up and sees Madison Avenue and names herself Madison. And so it, it kind of started out that trend and then mm. 10 years later became extremely popular. Mm. Oh, so okay. when people I feel that my name is younger and puts an age on me that some people keep telling me at some point I'll be grateful to be like 10 years younger than I am, but I'm not there yet. Cause it feels yeah. like an immature name and mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a professional. <laughs> I've always loved my name. It's always been like unique, but not complicated. 
I didn't know you loved your name. I love my We've name. We've never had this conversation like, before. I've, I've always been very proud, love my name, been obsessed with it, been very happy with it, always. I don't mm. know. I think uh, maybe part of it was mom. I feel like she instilled a lot of... Um, she did love our names. And she instilled that in us to yeah. also love our names and that they are unique. And she like gave us the confidence. Like she reminded us and like let us know like we should be confident in us. Like if in a sense, you know yeah. what I mean? Like she sh expressed how much she loved it. And I, I made it. And then growing up, I always felt like, yeah, my name is unique. It is cool. Like, and I, I've all, I've grown to love it. Um, See, so I, I really love it. Okay. So on that note, our sister changed her name legally. Not to me. <laughs> no. Okay. Again, <laughs> legally. Yeah. It was Caitlin. Because of spelling, because yeah. of a weird nickname spelling thing, nothing really to do with like, so her name was Caitlin and, um, oddly enough, like firstborn was named very normal name mm -hmm. that mom didn't like mom didn't name her mom didn't name her my Grandma grandmother did yeah. i don't mom, know how that happened while my mom was in the post birth days <laughs> also i think maybe like first like daughter first like yeah. first granddaughter like all that stuff like um but uh so she got caitlin and my mom didn't like it so we she nicknamed her cat and my sister's been cat her whole life and she was so tired of people not understanding that her legal name was Caitlin, but her nickname was Kat, that she changed her legal name to Catherine. Doesn't use it for mm -hmm. literally anything. She just changed it so that people could spell, like she could, on a bill, people would understand why her name was, her nickname was Kat. Oh, I don't know why she didn't. because there's an I in Caitlin. Caitlin, she spelled yeah. it K-A-I-T-L-Y-N, yeah. Oh, that's where that all comes from. Whenever I go to Kat's for like a barbecue or something, there's multiple people there. It's uh, it's Kat doesn't hear me caitlin doesn't hear me Catherine. yeah and then she turns around well, it's been like 10 years she recognizes Catherine. yeah i, call, I still I call her Catherine. it's I the third try immediately yeah i, just, like, I never sister. never you know, bad brother i've never we were visiting grandma just keep dead naming her right yeah well <laughs> so we're visiting our mom's mom two weeks ago who oh. named her <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that at the table <laughs> you've only known her as cat and Catherine. i it's been so long for me and grandma calls her Caitlin. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I, I have to take a minute. And I'm like, oh, yeah, right. That is her. Like, that's the name <laughs> yeah. that that woman gave her. Yep. Exactly. So, wow. I, th yeah, I mean, going back to the story, I feel like uh, there's got to be a limit. There's, there's like, listen, it's your own kid. You can do what you want. But think of your kid's future and yeah. what the shit that they're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Because being Juliet with that bullshit ass spelling. There's an H and a Y in there. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like you're just torturing your kid. Yeah. Torturing. How many times did I say when we were like throwing out names? I was like, I can hear that kid's ass being kicked. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess that's the thing that too, like that you have to remember is you're not just naming your baby. Mm -mm. You are naming a 40 year old. Well, yeah. and, and, and you are naming potential people that makes fun of. I don't know if you remember mom's story. But her name is actually Maria, and her she, middle name, yeah. And, oh no, I guess her first name. Yeah. Her her first name is Maria. <laughs> Forgot but my mom's name. She changed it to Marie when she yeah. could because her high school she was bullied and people called her Maria Diarrhea. Yeah. So she changed it to just Marie. It's, I mean, it it does roll really it easy. Does. It's, yeah, it's perfect. So, Maria Diarrhea. So like when rear you, and Reardon. Yeah. So like when you're naming your kids, you also have to go like. <laughs> I feel Chef's so bad. Kids. I feel so bad. <laughs> so when you're naming your kids, you also have to go like, what is not going to get bullied? Yeah. Like yeah. I can't, I can't think of anything, but there was some kids in school that like, you heard the names going around kind of like rhyming with something, getting made fun of. I will say like the only thing that people ever did was so benign and it was the like, Kachu like sneeze like yeah Kachu like, bless you yeah bless you like I would why like, was it that Madison all the Kachu grades? you'd say present they'd be like bless you like and I I remember being like you guys are so dumb that doesn't yeah. even like insult me it's so it never stupid insulted yeah. me. and I'm like I shouldn't say that because then they're gonna go find something worse <laughs> like, go back <laughs> to the lab that. and like come up with something so that was it but like, like how did how did people in your grade and people in my grade do that to both of us we're not that far apart cat. it probably started with no cat. like they and would they be different they'd be different people they would know. I then they know. have younger siblings and they'd sit them down and be like, okay, so listen, when you get to class today, <laughs> it's your first day of grade four, you're going to meet this kid, kid. kid with the kachoo. Oh, <laughs> this man. is how we make fun of them. Uh, <laughs> yep. All right. It really hurts them. It really does. So keep, keep doing it. <laughs> I feel like we're so far off now, but yeah, I think we just need to move on. Uh, 
That was Teresa's, a good story, though. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Chris did a good good job reading that, Excellent Chris. Excellent job. Thank you very much, guys. That one's going to go viral. That one's going to get a million views on TikTok. <laughs> Dude, I want some of that Pizza Hut money. <laughs> no, this, <laughs> that's rolling in. Different account. <laughs> different account. <laughs> that's, a, that's our other TikTok page. Oh, that's sponsored by Pizza Hut. This podcast Take some of that Pizza YOLO money. <laughs> brought to you by Cherry Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca -Cola. If anybody, any of our listeners work at Coca-Cola and you can hook us up with a Coca-Cola sponsorship, we would love that. I would love them on. Diet Cherry Coke is my absolute favorite. And being pregnant, I've had to try to limit my aspartame and it makes me sad. Chris, if you can, if you, if you know anybody in the marketing department that is interested that Air Canada wants to sponsor podcast, we're looking for sponsors right now, just so you know. All right. Actually, oh. keep that in mind in your board meetings. I know that person. At Air <laughs> I get invited to. <laughs> I know that person at Air Canada. Believe yeah, it or actually, not. Actually. Madison, send a LinkedIn message for us. I don't need to send a LinkedIn message. I can call her cell phone. Mm. Do it. I was call like, I'm planning a conference we, that is sponsored. Can we plug your cell phone into the thing? We'll put her on speaker. I'm planning Ooh. a conference that is sponsored by Air Canada. So That's cool. I know that person. That's cool. I'd just yeah. like to say that every person that listens to this podcast, they like to fly. They might not be in Canada, but they like to fly. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> most yeah. of our listeners Small are percent, in the most of our listeners planning are in a conference States. for women in the aviation and aerospace industry um, mm -hmm. to get together for professional development. So Boss a little bit ass different. Bitch. But... Slay. Do Doing it for Slay. free. Do you have a hashtag? <laughs> I'm a volunteer. Boss girl. No. Volunteer. Just volunteer, guys. Do you have an Instagram for your work? Apex Aircraft. All our followers, help Masson and follow Apex uh, Aircraft and comment and say, Thread Talk Podcast sent you. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody comment on Air Canada's Instagram and say, Thread Talk Podcast sent us. <laughs> okay. Moving along. Moving along. This one is from Today I Fucked Up. Today I uh, fucked the, the TIFUs. I love these ones. TIFUs. <laughs> Today I fucked up by eating my pregnant wife's food. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to die? <laughs> <laughs> Today, as I came home, I saw a delicious piece of cake in the fridge. No. I thought my wife must have already eaten hers and left the rest for me. She usually doesn't like eating anything sweet, so I was a hundred percent sure it was mine. My wife came home two hours later. She opened the fridge and started screaming where her piece of cake was. I told her that I had eaten it. She burst out crying, wasn't even crying anymore, a whole mental breakdown. I told her that I'll go to the grocery store and buy a new one. She just left, took her bag, probably going for a walk. My wife doesn't actually behave like that. I'm not sure if it's because of the hormones, pregnancy, etc. She started getting annoyed at little things like me eating too loud. She kind of scares me, not going to lie. <laughs> I went to the grocery store and bought her a new cake and all of her favorite snacks. She isn't back yet. <laughs> There's an update. <laughs> just, 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 dude, move, every, anybody who has a pregnant wife moving forward, something mysteriously appears in the fridge. Just don't eat it or at maximum only eat half of it. Oh, I don't that's know not why. safe no, either. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't know why, but I'm mad at Chris right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel like, you know, the feeling that you get when you're trying not to cry. <laughs> like I could halfway through that story, I was thinking about what if he did that to me, and I was having to suppress the urge to cry. <laughs> what if he did that to me? He basically has done that to me. <laughs> not like, not like specifically eat like ate eaten. Something that I've like left in the fridge for myself. Um, no. no. But it, like it, I get it so much, <laughs> so much. Like we don't like if you think something is being split. I'm like your mom made apple tort the other night, and there was only one piece left. It was leftovers from a different party. Yeah. And uh, so I had a piece, and then Chris was like, "What if I had like a little bit?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay." He's like, "Yeah, just leave me a little bit." And I got three quarters of the way through. I'm like, "I'm not leaving you, Annie. I'm sorry." <laughs> like, this is just well, I, this I had to go going. downstairs and steal my brother's cupcakes out of the freezer. I was like, "Well, listen, shit rolls downhill." So, like, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, don't fucking touch a pregnant lady's food. I get it, and I'm not even pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Don't touch Teresa's food. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes us happy. We're uncomfortable. Everything hurts. Most the food, whole, yeah. most food makes us want to puke. When you eat something and it does, and it makes you feel joy in pregnancy, <laughs> like that feeling is so like unparalleled. <laughs> Fleeting. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five seconds later you've got acid reflux and like oh. indigestion, and you regret it. But it's our cake. <laughs> okay, there is an update. My wife came home one hour ago. As I said, I brought her favorite snacks. 
healthy snacks no. and put them on the table. Oh, dude, there's your, <laughs> there's your first mistake. She apologized to me, went into the living room and saw the surprise. All of a sudden, she was like a little angel, having the biggest smile on her face and constantly <laughs> hugging me. I took a shower afterwards. I was shocked to see that she had eaten all the food. I wanted to say, damn, you really ate all of that? <laughs> but luckily, I didn't. Wouldn't be alive after saying that. <laughs> I'm so interested to know how far along she is. Obviously, the first kid, obviously. But I'm interested to know how far along she was. Because in the first couple of months when we were navigating, we were navigating my emotional roller coaster ride, <laughs> you sucked at it. Um, like he would laugh while I was crying because he just couldn't wrap his brain around the fact that I would be crying at these ridiculous things. You yeah. weren't being very nice to me. No, I wasn't being very nice. And I didn't want to be very nice. I was in <laughs> so like... much pain that I was like, you deserve something and it's gonna be my wrath um, i was like i will make you like coffee and stuff and dinners and go get things but like can you b just be nice to me when he would you, actually she was say like, that sometimes no <laughs> he was standing he had just brought me something standing over the bed and he was like could you just be nice to me and i was like nope i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to um, you have to share her like, pain well, i don't it's only want fair. to bring you like yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't butter toast to... anymore. He's like, I don't want to take care of you if you're not going to be nice to me. I'm like, you will take care of me. I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> we are pregnant, Chris. We are pregnant. Oh, we're... No, 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 we're not. We are not pregnant. I am pregnant and he is taking care of me. <laughs> that's, that's you are pregnant. Yes, that's what that I am means. pregnant. No, no, no. I, I... You are pregnant. That's exactly you're... what that no, no, means. No, no, no. I am pregnant. I've tried to take some of the, the yes, sir, shine off that no, Madison will no, no, not no. accept any. No, no, we're not. Not in this. Not in this situation. It is all me. Um, but so I do think that that gentleman has not had enough experience because after about like the third month, I think I got a little nicer, and <laughs> you started to really figure out to not laugh while I cried. Yeah, you know, you both, it both sides. And now you come home with tons of junk food all the time, every time from the although. Gross. I, although Aren't you supposed you, to be eating healthy? Yeah, moderately. Hey, don't shame her. <laughs> you um, you went to the bakery this morning and got a loaf of bread and brought back treats. And I was going to have one when I came home from work and I noticed they're gone. Did you eat both of them? No, they're still here. Okay, good. Well, no, the, okay. the omelet croissant. That's yours. That's definitely gone. Where's the other one? Monkey bread is in the fridge. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, yeah, I was like, you brought two treats home. You got to at least save one for me. <laughs> okay, top comment. My mom told me that when she was pregnant with me, she received a bottle of perfume as a gift and ended up burying it in the garden because she couldn't stand its smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had lilies on the table um, in the dining room and I would walk through um, every once in a while and I'm like, I think Fred peed in the dining room. <laughs> and Chris is like, our dog hasn't peed in the house in years, like after he was housebroken, other than like the odd accident. And he's yeah. like, he couldn't possibly have just peed in the dining room. And I'm like, there is pee in this dining room somewhere. Yeah. And I'm scoping around and I'm looking behind stuff. And then I realize it's the lilies on the table oh. and the set they were giving I was like, off. You mean the flowers that I brought you a couple days ago? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, they have to go. They have to go. We have to throw these out. Um, so I get that. Oh, that's funny. Pregnancy is a joy. Everybody should do it. Have babies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving along. Yep. All right. Am I the asshole for not preparing my pregnant wife food? No. Did she ask? Is, wait, is there more? Yeah. <laughs> There's still the whole story. <laughs> it's called the title mask. <laughs> this is not our first story. <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited to comment. <laughs> My wife is five months pregnant and has started to feel hungry a lot. She is recovering from vomiting consistently and now it's just once a week or two. We both work from home and I try to do the majority of the household chores with cooking, cleaning, dishes, laundry, and breakfast, lunch, dinner, etc. Wow. Champion. Although it's a small apartment and no kids yet, so it's not really that much work. And we typically just have milk and bread for breakfast, which I bring to her in bed. She helps with cooking whenever she's feeling good. And lately she has started to cook more than me. Otherwise, I cook the dinner with often some assistance from her, such as cutting up the vegetables. We save the dinner for lunch the next day. It's a good it's a good going most of the time. The problem is that my wife keeps complaining to me that she is hungry and I haven't fed her. 
I do offer her snacks like banana, fruits, and nuts, but she says she is looking for some real food because she is very hungry. When I ask her, what do you want me to make? She often doesn't have an answer and tells me she doesn't know, but she is hungry. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If I offer to make something, say soup or boiled potatoes, she shoots it down for one reason or another, whether it's carbs or it's not good or it's too light or she's not too hungry, etc. This gets me visibly frustrated. Today, she agreed to a serving of watermelon, which I cut and served. While cutting it, I asked her to tell me what she wants to eat because she will start complaining in a while that she is hungry and I can't immediately have something ready to eat because it takes preparation. She said she is good for a while and didn't entertain my question. Well, as predicted, when I visited her room in an hour or so after work, she started pouting that she is hungry and I didn't feed her anything since lunch throughout the day. This made me a bit angry because I did feed her the watermelon and some dry snacks. It just wasn't proper food. Moreover, I had asked her what to eat exactly for this reason, and she had refused to answer then. I told her she is expecting too much from me, both figuring out what to make and then make it. I asked her that she should at least take the responsibility of figuring out what she wants to eat and let me know in advance. She felt like I was invalidating her and then said, okay, I won't tell you anything from now on, as in pouting. I got annoyed and I left the room. Am I the asshole? (laughs) <laughs> should this person we, be pre- predicting pregnant lady do you want to come no, yeah. pregnant yeah. lady wants to eat no he's not an asshole no 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 it's not anybody else's responsibility to take care of another adult as a partner in pregnancy because we are not pregnant but you are a partner in the pregnancy um you know taking care of your spouse or your partner whatever you want to say is you know very kind and generous now, the one thing I will very, very aggressively point to is when he was like, I'm asking her in advance. Why doesn't she know? Yeah. No, it doesn't actually kick in until it kicks in. Um, you're like really full. And then all of a sudden you have like barely eaten and you've been starving for days or you're starving. You take one bite of food and you're so full that you have to run to the bathroom and like puke it up. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, so, I, I think, you, sorry. Yeah. I, I think what he's saying is like, he's, he's trying to. It takes a while for him to get ready. Yeah. So he's trying to have things ready for yeah. her before she gets hungry. That's not, Nobody knows pregnancy though. is not logical. Chris yeah. has Chris has related me to a toddler. Um, <laughs> and it's it's so true. Like I am basically three years old. There's no there's sometimes it's not logical with what my body is telling me that I need in the moment. And we eat a lot more fast food now because I don't want to wait when I want it. I want it. I get in the car. I go to Wendy's. I eat the Wendy's. I don't want to wait for a meal to be cooked. I don't want to wait. I have chicken strips in the freezer. I don't want to wait for the air fryer Mm -hmm. to turn on. I don't want to wait for them to cook. So I I do understand that side of it from her. He is not an asshole, though. He's just doing his best to keep up. And like, kudos to him. Just keep trying. Just got to ride the wave. Just keep trying. Yeah. And she's not an asshole either. It's a really difficult thing, especially if it's their first. Especially if it's their first. You have no control over what's happening on the inside. Why are you owing me, Teresa? Because you're breathing like this. <laughs> well, Wait, it might be me. No, I think it's Denver. <laughs> so nobody is an asshole. That's my opinion. Nobody's an asshole. In pregnancy and support, nobody is an asshole for just doing their best. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like he doesn't was... doesn't get many likes, but it's fair. I, I think he was just trying... <laughs> The internet is not for nuance. <laughs> he was trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. And you you can't yeah. really get ahead of it. Nope. Yeah, like, he's trying his best. Working Poor from guy. home, both of them working from home and like being around each other constantly because yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of like internet memes about like women and it's like how I act when I'm when how pregnancy affects me when my husband's home versus when my husband's not home. And it's like when my husband's not home, it's like you're carrying everything, you're loading everything, you're making your own food, you're like, I got this. And then your husband's home and you're like, uh, can you get my water? Pick it up. Pregnancy's so hard. <laughs> so being like a working both from home would be, I think, put a little bit more pressure on him to support her because mm. you do rely on somebody when they're there. Yeah. Um, whereas if she went to work and had no choice but to like take care of herself, it might put a little bit more mm-hmm. self-sufficiency yeah. even throughout pregnancy and give both of them a break. Yeah. No. So, so there is an update. Here it is. 
Thanks everyone for responding to this post. While the majority of the not the asshole replies were reassuring to the read, the most helpful ones were the no assholes here is and everyone sucks here, and even some <laughs> you the assholes. First things first, I want first things first, I feel I may have unintentionally cast my wife in a somewhat unfair light. She's far from the lazy, pampered princess some may have pictured. She is on her feet a fair bit, grabbing her own snacks, sipping water, and even tossing together some rice for our lunch now and then. She's really quite the team player around the house, always ready to lend a hand when she's feeling good. I often find myself encouraging her to kick back and rest. The real pickle here wasn't about her helping out or not, but about her leaning on me to sort out all of her meals. Reading all of your comments, I had a bit of a aha moment. She genuinely didn't know what she felt like eating. Yeah. And to be totally transparent, this food decision deadlock isn't a new game for us. Pre-pregnancy, <laughs> we'd often volley the, no, you decide ball until one of us gives in. Now that we've got a baby on the way, I've realized it would be quite irresponsible for both of us to let her go hungry because she can't decide. While technically her, it's her responsibility to decide, I have taken up on following some advice here. So following some solid advice from this community, I snag the real food for pregnancy, the science and wisdom of optimal prenatal nutrition. And it's been quite an eye opener. I've shared the need to know parts with my wife since reading makes her a tad nervous at the moment. We've come to realize that we've been pretty off track with our nutrition. I've told her we need to increase our protein consumption and I've shared my plans on buying more meat and fish. I've also started following the advice of just giving her food without asking what she wants and it actually works. Overall, I think this is making her feel that I care about her diet and her and our relationship has improved. I also feel pretty good about our diet now. In a nutshell, we're making progress. She seems more at ease with our meal situation. I'm feeling pretty good about getting our nutrition on track. He sounds awesome. He sounds like a 10 out of 10. He really sounds great. like he's really trying. Yeah. yeah. And like first baby is really hard yeah. to go through. I'll let you guys know how the second one works out. But like <laughs> I'll let all, everybody know. Um, you know, it's just really hard. And you have no idea. No idea. You have no idea. And your body is just throwing a curveball at you all the time. And so, yeah, when he was saying, like, she didn't know, like, oh, my God, she doesn't actually know what she wants to eat. Yeah, no, that's a real thing. And you don't know what's going to make you puke or not puke. How many like, dinners did we throw out? A lot. Because. <laughs> like, stuff that you love. Yeah. Usually. In the four-month mark, I was getting so full by about, like, mid-afternoon that I couldn't eat dinner. And then when I get full, I get immediately nauseous. And that's still actually a fact. Mm. And you've watched me like halfway through lunch. The food's in my mouth. The bite before, amazing. That bite in my mouth, my stomach, my body's like, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. And oh. I sit there spitting into my in a, napkin. In a restaurant. Oh because the moment I'm full, I can't, I have to stop eating. And it's just because everything's like all pushed and compressed. And yeah. so something's pushing on something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you do not know until the moment. Yeah. Like, yeah, you made... You made one of my, like, my favorite, like, last meal on earth meal. Like, when I was, like, six or seven <laughs> weeks pregnant, when Heather and Craig were here, like, steak, potatoes, oh, salad, yeah. shrimp cocktail, like, the whole thing. I, like, yeah, I took one bite stops. of the steak and spit it back out onto my plate and was Aww. like, I'm done. Yeah. So, yeah, you just don't know. You don't know. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like at the beginning, like, he's not really the asshole for not being able to predict what his wife wants to of eat. Of course, yeah. But then, it, 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 and then there's, but he goes above and beyond and says, you know what, I'm just going to cook stuff and give it to her because she doesn't even know what she need, she yeah. wants to eat. But maybe if I just put something in front of her, maybe she'll eat it or there'll be food there and she won't feel like she's hungry. Like, I'm just going to step up my game and give her more food that I know she's willing to eat and just put it there in front of her and take that decision off her plate. I think he's... Also good on him An for angel. researching some of that stuff too, because there's yeah. like extra protein and calcium. Protein, yes, but like I didn't know, and your mom enlightened me that like calcium, because um, babies will take what babies need from your body. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have extra calcium, you'll be calcium deficient, and if you don't have extra iron, you'll be iron deficient. Your baby will be fine. <laughs> yeah, but like the woman's body will not be so fine. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, definitely some extra things to to know at that point with nutrition. Mm -hmm, for yeah. sure do you want to make all of my meals just instead I of the, already do that instead of the 50 <laughs> you make 50 percent of my meals right now you make dinner 
We I, make dinner. Yeah, that's true. I was like, you don't, you don't make all my you meals. Do, you do pack your lunches. I, I make my, I make breakfast and my own lunch. <laughs> you just make dinners. I can't cook. So that's why he makes dinner. But man, can I make peanut butter toast and a smoothie? <laughs> smoothie was terrific this morning, actually. Can't keep it off the floor, though. <laughs> didn't know I spilled it, okay? You know, that's the one thing about not letting our dog in the kitchen. <laughs> Fred would have cleaned that up. It is that one part that we're like, nope, Fred's, stop. He's not allowed out, behind the island, out. right? Mm. That's why the markers are there, so that he doesn't get like any dangerous between the stove yeah. or tripped on. And that's where the honey I had dropped. So if we, <laughs> if we just let that rule go, he would have cleaned that right up. Yep. That's funny. Smart, Fred. All right. Moving along. Teresa's turn. All right. This one comes from Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for telling my child's daycare teacher that my child won't finish cleaning up? My two-year-old daughter has been in a home daycare for a few months now. The teacher, Sasha, is very nice. I'm normally all for my daughter cleaning her own messes. However, I find when I arrive, Sasha expects my daughter to finish cleaning up whatever she was playing with which again would be fine, but it delays us getting out the door and heading home. Sometimes we have plans, etc. I started texting Sasha when I was... What? Oh, I'll be his him. He's such a heavy breather. I, I try to tell him this all, all the time. time. <laughs> it's like, I thought it was me. I was like, I didn't think it was me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, who knows? It my, could have been me too. My podcast technique was weak. <laughs> You're breathing. Like, you, you should see a doctor. <laughs> Your breathing is very heavy. When I'm, we can have the sleep apnea conversation later. But like, <laughs> no, not when going, you're sleeping. I'm when you're okay just breathing, I'm, you're not. Asleep I'm okay right when now. I'm awake. <laughs> Clearly, you're not. It's just amplified. No, 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 no. He's this is not uh, into anyway. A mic no, he has. He, you have like headphones. you have heavy breathing. You should like. Yeah. I have large lungs. We should work on... You got to work on some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> work on it. <laughs> got to work on breathing less. Yes. Uh, gotcha. Okay, please. Okay. Teresa's okay. doing a thing. <laughs> it's okay. I started texting Sasha when I was so many minutes away, asking her to get my daughter ready, and that seemed to work. My daughter would be in her jacket and reading a book, easy to put away, versus a huge Duplo project or similar. Until today. Things were crazy, and I was in a rush. We had a lot to do this afternoon, and I was running behind because I had car trouble. When I arrived, my daughter and some friends were in the middle of cleaning up a big mess. I told my daughter that we had to go and get her coat. Sasha said she needed to finish cleaning up her part. I said any other day, sure, but I am running late and we cannot miss this appointment. Sasha tried arguing that the kids need to learn responsibility, and I flat out said no. I grabbed my daughter, put her coat on, and left. As I said, hectic afternoon, so I only just now had time to check my texts. I had one from Sasha saying, poor planning on my part doesn't mean I can't break rules. I pointed out this is not in the contract and I can bring my child home whenever I need. She accused me of undermining her authority. I was given a verbal warning, which I found ridiculous. Am I the asshole? No. Yes. What? I think so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Well, this is going to be good to get into. Yeah. I don't think so because like, this is what I pay you for. I pay you to watch my kid. I pay you to clean up after my kid at daycare. I'm in a rush. Normally, I'm all good for you, creating good habits and stuff, but I have something important to go to. Give me my kid. We are out of here. Nope. It's the beginning of the, the story sounded like this is not the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Sasha's response responding to like, if you've built a relationship where it's like, you know, generally everything's fine and we have enough time and every, like we're respectful of each other and blah, blah, blah. It probably wouldn't escalate to that. So, and I think what, what Madison may, may say is that the kid needs to know that yeah. like, you can't just like dip out on responsibilities yeah. for, convenient reasons right but why can't they start cleaning up before now what the daycare provider can do yeah but what it sounds like is that the mom in this very in the end was like late car trouble that's all her fault and you're teaching your child bad habits of undermining the daycare um which is a um, authority figure for your daughter and the daycare professional cannot do her job if the child doesn't respect and you know have that 
relationship there so that she listens. So having your mom who trumps daycare provider come in and be like, we don't have to clean this up because we're late right now. You're teaching your child to not have to listen to the daycare, especially at such a young age where it could be that the next time the child, you ask the child to clean up, she's like, I don't have to. My mom says I don't have to. And then that daycare per, like worker who spends six hours a day, seven hours a day with that child has no more control and you end up in a dangerous, bad situation. Maybe not dangerous, but you end up in a bad situation for everybody involved. Slippery slope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're teaching your kids incredibly bad habits for your fault. The read It sounds like she had made the changes and now they read books at the end of the day. So then your cleanup is just go put your book back. Your, mm-hmm. your parent is here. Go put your book back. So it sounds like there was some changes and then she was late and there was some, you know, outside factors there. What if this is like literally just like once in a blue moon? Like it's still, once every six months. No. Is your kid going to remember that one time yes. where it's like, I need to leave versus all the other times of you need to put your stuff away? When you were growing up, how many times did we try to get away with stuff and mom would say no every single time? But if mom said no once, you would take that and be like, what you said, yeah, you said no or yes last time. The consistency is the most important thing when it comes yeah, to this. Maybe like the next week would be a little bit difficult, nope. but I don't know. What if the kid's not privy to this conversation? It would be very difficult to in- insulate if, the child completely. Well, yeah. I, I doubt this this argument is going to be like right in front of the kid. I feel like it'd be near the front door. Still, kids are smart though, right? Because and you have like all of a sudden your mom and the, and your daycare provider who you're familiar with. And there's like tension between the two of them. And it's like, okay, let's go. Even if it wasn't directly in front of you, kids are smart. Also, I think too, like the adults have to be more responsible than that. So this woman should have called in advance and said, I'm having these car issues. I'm going to be eight. I'm going to be late. Like it's dramatic, but can you have my kid at the door in their coat? Like Mm. ready to go. I need this from you. This is an outlying situation. My car just broke down. I'm now late. I would agree with that. that There's a responsibility that the parent needs to, the adult needs to take. I would agree with that. It's not the, the, like the, the, at the end of the day, she's teaching the child bad habits. Um, and that's where the breakdown lies. There's a lot of things that adults can do to avoid that. Yeah. I, I would agree that like she should have called the head and let them know. I am running late. I need my kid ready for as soon as yeah. I get there. Yeah. Please have her clean up her stuff now, especially when you know that it's always a thing that your kid needs to clean up after themselves before they can leave. Yeah. You know that. So maybe you should be calling ahead or texting and letting them know, hey, and if you had done that and then they're still not ready, it's like, hey, I told you, like, I got to go. We don't have time for this. Like, uh, you know? Yeah. Now, Also, every parent knows how long it takes to get a kid ready and out the door. So if you need to be walking out of daycare at five o'clock, you should be getting to daycare at 445. Mm. That's not a, that's not a, you know, outlying thing from daycare to daycare and child to child. Um, You know, you can't get out the door in five minutes with a kid. They don't know how to put their shoes on. They have these expecting parents mindset that we don't have. Yeah, I know. I just, I also feel like though she was late this one time. And I just feel like if they were cleaning up earlier the other times, why weren't they cleaning up early this time? Yep. Like, I don't know. Just... I feel like at the end of the day, you pay for the service. And if it's not in your contract, then if you need to and it's emergency, you can take your kid and you're not the asshole. If it's an emergency. If it's an emergency. Sure. Like, you're not the asshole. Are you setting potentially bad habits for your kid? Yes. But are you the asshole to the daycare uh, center? I don't think so. Well, see, I think that's where we go back into like the nuance of like, nobody's really an asshole <laughs> for all of these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sometimes it's okay to be the asshole. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to be, right? I have a pillow I made up that says sometimes it's okay to be the asshole. <laughs> but she isn't in the right, if that's the better way to say it. She isn't in the right. But technically she is. It's not in her contract that the kid needs to no, no, but in the expectations, yeah. like, like parenting saying, like versus you can... how, like you're paying a like person to work for you those are two different conversations can I... you treat an employee like that sure should you parent like that correct we I don't think, think she's so. in the right but is maybe setting a bad example for her kid yeah so then is she an asshole sometimes it's okay to be an asshole <laughs> so you're saying she's an asshole 
But I'm just saying. So you're like, agreeing with us in the right. <laughs> so we got you. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we just won that. <laughs> I, I would offer to fist bump you, but you left me hanging last time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Reddit does not agree with you. <laughs> Overall vote is not the asshole. Top comment. Not the asshole. I can. I completely agree with the day home teacher's sentiment. But it is your kid and you can leave whenever you damn well want. Just need to be kind and respectful about it. Daycare pickup should not take 20 minutes. Working parents need to get home, run errands, make dinner, do extracurriculars, and then have quality time left with their children. That 20 minutes waiting around at daycare really cuts into a person's tight schedule. Perhaps the teacher should not allow messy or busy activities after 4.30 p.m. and instead encourage reading, larger, simpler toys, or things that are easy to put away in a hurry. I would agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Like if it's winding down to home time, put away your Lego castle. Also, Duplo is uh, is Lego. It's big Lego, yeah. Yeah, it's large Lego. I I only have one friend with kids, but her kids' daycare, um, her kids' preschool had them in the yard for pickup. Like, so there was no toys. There was no activities. Mm. They were in their outdoor clothes. Backpacks were right there That's lined awesome, up on yeah. the fence. Perfect. And so the parents pulled up. They could see those cars. Those kids knew what their parents' cars looked like. Bye, Timmy. I gotta and go. And they would automatically mm-hmm. run to the gate. And then there'd be a person at the gate who would, you know, coordinate with the parent and do the handoff. That's genius. And so, and like, the, I never thought about it before. Yeah. Have this, a soccer ball like, to kick around. Yeah. There was no, they were in their gear. Yep. And that they, they went out for 15 minutes of play time and then around pickup time. Just and, grab your backpack on the fence line. Exactly. That's genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is genius. That's what you get when you pay for private school. Private school, preschool. Private preschool. <laughs> How much private school costs? You guys looked into that yet? Uh, private. 18. Yeah, Montessori school for preschool at two and a half is 16. If Which is what is going to be happening for us. If our followers who are watching on YouTube smash the like button on this video, <laughs> we may support he who must not be named in his private school adventures. <laughs> Moving along. Am I the asshole for requesting that my wife cleans up after herself? <laughs> I, 28 male, married my wife, 23 female, who we'll call Danny. About a year ago, we were very lucky to get pregnant soon after after danny is in her third trimester now and on pregnancy leave once we got the good news i started working extra hours in order to save money for when the baby gets here this means that i have to get up very early every morning to get to work i try to be out the door by 6 a.m i get home a little later and i'm usually pretty beat but i still contribute to the house by doing the dishes cleaning up after the cat and that kind of stuff around the house This new routine has been hard for both of us, but we've made it work so far and everything has been fine. That is, until the other day, when I wake up to Danny crying. We only have one bathroom, which is downstairs, and lately Danny has been having a little more trouble going up and down the stairs. This usually went fine, but this time she didn't make it. So when I came downstairs, I found her in tears standing in her own mess. She was clearly very embarrassed and even more so that I caught her. I immediately felt bad for her and tried to comfort her and told her that it's all good. It can happen to anyone. Just clean it up and we'll go back to bed. She asked me if I could help her, but I told her that that makes me uncomfortable. I would never expect anyone to clean up after my mess. To be honest, it has happened before when I had a couple too many beers, but I always clean up after myself and I would feel weird to ask Danny to do it for me in that situation. But she got really mad and called me insensitive for making her clean up after herself after an already embarrassing enough situation. I proposed a compromise. She would clean up the mess and I would get her clean PJs since I'd just done laundry anyway. She asked me if this is what it was going to be like if the baby made a mess, and I told her I would be perfectly okay to clean up after the babies since it can't clean up after itself. I then told her I didn't have the time to stand here arguing with her all night as I had to get up in three hours to go to work and provide for us. So I walked upstairs, grabbed her PJs for her, and went back to bed. The next morning, when I got downstairs, I found her on the couch. She told me that she barely slept and felt horrible about the night before. She called me an asshole and said that by not helping her, I only embarrassed her more. 
She then told me she would be staying with her mom until I got my shit together. It's been a half a day now and she's not responding to my texts. I talked about it with a few coworkers and I'm getting mixed responses. And I just want to make sure, am I the asshole? Not love it. A little I have sensitive. A, yeah. I have a question. Like, why does she want him to clean it up? Is it because <laughs> she is so pregnant that like she cannot like it's she's, harder to pick, yeah, like harder to clean after third herself. Trimester. Yeah. yeah, she's third trimester, so I think there's a reason why she's asking him to clean it up. Not because she's lazy. I think she like actually needs the help. There's probably like an extreme vulnerability happening. Yeah, where you just want somebody to guide you into the shower. Yeah, like and help you with that that moment. And that person, that specific person, is supposed to do that for you. Yeah, and it's like twofold. What are you gonna do after birth? Mm -hmm. because you have to help your partner you don't always have to help them like directly clean themselves but it is very hard to walk and stand yeah and so you require support to go to the bathroom so you'll have nurses for the first day or two when you're in the hospital but you might need that person to help you get to the toilet um afterwards especially if you have a c-section or any sort of like tearing and stitches like yep. there's a lot of like your body has been through trauma Mm -hmm. And so you need your support person to help you. Also, what's your plan in 50 years? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Are you not going to take care of your partner in 50 years? Yeah. Like, you know, where you end up in an incontinent situation, yeah. like yeah. as a routine. Like this, this issue will come up. This is not going to be the, the last time that this happens. So yeah. I think, yeah, he is being insensitive. And a little bit. At three in the morning, you can make a decision that, like, it might be shocking yeah. and jarring. Yeah. But then to come and it back sucks later, that he has to like get up. In yeah. Three that hours, sucks. like that's yeah. That does yeah. suck. But that's life. Oh, for sure. Like to come back to the internet later and still kind of be like, I'm still thinking I'm not that. It's not like what did I do wrong? If you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm sorry, that was insensitive. Yeah. I caught me off guard. You know, like yeah. that won't happen again. Great. But for you to defend it later on, I no, would, like, uh, yeah. like you're saying, your partner's looking for like protection and support. Right? Protection. That's yeah. the thing too I, that I didn't even think about. It's like, yeah, that I can't imagine what she felt like mm -hmm. to go through that. Oh my God. I hope I don't, that doesn't happen to me. This dude's we a have piece an of shit. We have an ensuite, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. There's no downstairs. <laughs> I don't have to go all the way downstairs. This, yeah. this dude's a piece of shit. He seems immature. Like, yeah, well, really. Grow the fuck up, man. Yeah. It's a little bit of pee. Like you're, or you're, poo. she's in her, we third, don't know what it like is. She's yeah. in her third <laughs> trimester. She can't lean over. She yeah. can fucking be on her hands or knees cleaning shit up. Like you're like, a piece of shit, dude. It's like a pitcher of pink lemonade thrown against the wall. <laughs> like, dude. Yeah. She, Chris, Chris has cleaned up our dogs. Um, when he eats stuff in the garden and he has some <laughs> l looser poos in the middle of the night, Chris has cleaned it up because it's happened while I was pregnant. And I can't do it. So I'm Listen, like, I'm, I love Teresa can clean up after sacrifice me Sacrifice for your family. Sometimes if Teresa can clean up to me while I'm fucking puking everywhere, I'll clean oh. up her piss. Whether she's pregnant or not. <laughs> or poo. I would have, I have a suspicion. This isn't pee. <laughs> there is an update. Yeah, no, this is definitely not pee. <laughs> there is an update. So let's get into that. Update. So I wanted to post this before going to work while still fresh my memory. Basically, not much has happened since I posted the original thread until Danny came home later that night. Her mom was with her, but she only helped her load up stuff and didn't look at me or address me once. While the mom was packing up Danny's things, Danny sat down in the living room and I joined her. I told her we needed to talk about what happened and she reluctantly agreed. She explained to me that for her to get down... And up on her knees to clean the floor was painful and that it was borderline cruel to expect that of her. I told her that if she was having so much trouble moving that she should have told me sooner so we could have worked on a solution together. And if she had explained to me calmly yesterday, then I would have reacted differently. She thought it was too much to ask her to spell everything out and that I need to be more present both during the pregnancy and after. I told her that was difficult for me to hear as I feel I have already contributed significantly and don't want to feel like she doesn't see that. She expressed that she does appreciate me putting in the extra time at work, but that she also needs emotional support, especially in situations like last night. 
I agreed with her to an extent, but I did try to make sure she understood why I found the situation uncomfortable in the moment, which, after some explaining, she did. I briefly considered telling her that I talked about it at work and showing her the thread, but I'll take the Reddit's advice to heart and keep that to myself. I won't delete the post. She's not on Reddit anyway. So we concluded on the following things. Danny will be staying with her mom because she does have a bathroom on every floor until we figured out a way for her to sleep downstairs comfortably, not on the couch or an air mattress. I've apologized sincerely for making her discomfort worse. And she is in turn apologized for blowing up at me the way she did. And we mutually agreed that we are going to work on it. For those of you who are wishing that Danny leaves me, I love my wife very much. She's in the <laughs> In the five years we've been together, we've never had anything like this, and I'm determined to make us work again, and so is she. So in all in all, I think things will turn out all right. Thanks for your insights, Reddit, and for making me see that I acted a little out of line. Yeah, it seems like there's just a maturity thing here, and that mm -hmm. if they can work it through and grow together, then I'm like, yeah, I don't, I mean, staying with your mom... <laughs> Relax the internet, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't think there's any call yeah. for divorce. <laughs> He's working hard because he is, they're trying to obviously make some extra money in that and she's going on leave and that's fine. But I was like, yeah, he had a bad reaction to something. How many times do, like, it's tough that it's during pregnancy where things are very heightened and you're wondering like, you know, how's this person going to be a parent? Do I want, like, you realize you're a little bit more trapped for life. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, you and I have had a ton of fights at the beginning of trying to like work through how to communicate with each other and like... Mm -hmm you may say something like I hear it different than you say it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The words leave your mouth with one intention and they go into my ears and I hear it completely different. Yeah. We've had and that happen. Yeah. That's just long-term relationships. Yeah. It's just tough that that's such an embarrassing, it is interesting vulnerable to, yeah. position. It is interesting to know whether, whether it was shit or pee. Yeah. Cause I it, feel like find out at all. No, I feel like if it's <laughs> pee, that is easier to handle. If you fucking shit everywhere. <laughs> You know, like if it's big turds, maybe that's okay. <laughs> it's fucking diarrhea. <laughs> that's that's the I feel that's you. The, the mess. That's like the yeah. euphemism to like, it's know. doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Like, I feel like the mess is just pee. Like, I feel like you can pee yourself. I feel like it's very hard to shit yourself. If you mess yourself. Yeah. Massa, what do you think? Pregnancy is hard. <laughs> <laughs> i have a red flag that i'm seeing that maybe i'm reading a little bit too in between the lines but who comes up with a fake name for their person on reddit no everybody does and oh, where yeah, do they get the name danny no no like, no, no is that that's like a, a porn star or no. a high school crush like where does this guy come up with these names nah, 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 no it's a it's a common thing a as a as a reddit connoisseur. yeah i'm not a redditor <laughs> you're, you're taking this okay a that, too far that's, that's what, what people like, do on reddit to kind of like protect people's privacy no i understand why yeah. you change your name but on the the other stories they would just say like our my partner my wife like yeah. and repeat that versus like he's like let's call her danny and yeah. i'm like well where did a danny few. where did yeah, danny come from don't read into yeah. that people okay. pick a name and usually like they'll just pick a similar name that's slightly different right. so this guy is definitely an asshole in the situation but i think he can work on it and grow yeah. and i wish them a long and happy uh marriage and i hope that she he shits all over the place when he's in his 80s and she maybe leaves I, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> i i just i second that yeah sure, except for that last little part <laughs> just needs to I you think know they can fix that yeah there's Grow. hope for him but yeah. i think he'll man up the next time just clean good it job up. danny's husband just clean it up Danny. yeah just clean it up you're getting there <laughs> all right moving along <laughs> Teresa, did you notice chris's socks yes and madison's socks yes i did what they're black <clears throat> You don't like black socks? You know why? I oh, like really? black socks. I, I was like, yeah, Under Armour. These are wicked. I love them. <laughs> I hate black socks. Because really? you don't see if they're like, um, you know, know, over time your your white socks get dirty yeah. and stained and then you can't get like the stains So out. I used to never have white socks. Yeah. I have a variety, but I have the black socks for I, the winter. Yeah, I have black stuff. and white. When yeah. I first started dating Teresa, I didn't have one single <laughs> pair of black. I had like two grays. I mean, not a single pair of white. Yeah. They're all black and like two grays. Black socks are more versatile. Yeah, that's what I used to think. But my white socks have been actually staying white since I met Teresa. My white socks would always get wrecked before Teresa, but... You were a child. Do you, yeah. do you wash them now? Is that <laughs> Maybe that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I put shoes on more often. See, I'm a runner. So if I run in brown socks... And brown? Have, like, if I run in white socks, <laughs> they sorry. Brown? They get brown from the splash up uh, of dirt. Mm. And then over time, my running socks, it's like impossible to get constant dirt stains out. Yeah. So yeah, now I, I wear 
black, black shoes. Yeah. And like black shoes with white socks sometimes looks ridiculous. Tracy, you're so. wrong. It does. You're the I asshole. know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. wrong. Also, everybody has a belly button. They're fine. What? It's a phobia. <laughs> it's That's not a phobia. I, I wouldn't say it's a phobia. No. Bro, she ran out of my condo I when I tried them. throwing black socks at her. I don't. I well, can't touch black really? socks. Really? Yeah. I thought it was funny, so I like pulled some black socks this out of the sock drawer. This is going on the clean? show, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I they were threw, clean. They were clean. Clean. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Balled up black socks. This was in like the first month of us dating. It was like a third no. or a second date. Yeah, it was. It was the beginning. I don't think so. We were in his year. apartment on the third date. Ooh, good for I, you. Yeah, spicy. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I, I remember he asked me to be his girlfriend on the third date. And you, you were in my apartment on that day, yeah. but this would have been after that. Yeah. So after this would have been like committed. two months or something like that. <laughs> and like, uh, how do you feel about black socks? <laughs> this is when I found and out. Belly this is when she admitted it to me, and I thought, no, you're you're not serious. You're joking. I fucking said catch. I threw it at her. She's like ah. And then I threw another one at her. She fucking ran out into the hallway. She's like, I'm going home. Elevator button was clicked. She's like, I'm fucking out of here. I told you not to throw them at me. And you threw them at me again. I'm out. And then I had to like apologize and beg her to come back inside. Say goodbye to all these sweet desserts. Yeah. No, no. This was before she cooked. I was the wifey at the beginning of the relationship. She yes, never cooked. You were. I cooked all the time. And then it wasn't. She, Teresa didn't start cooking until COVID. Maybe someday. I love you. Uh, no, 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 no. You know how I fold the towels really nicely? That's my... Do that you don't I give a totally shit about. Care. That's my Bro. contribution to our relationship. <laughs> Teresa folds the towels in our bathroom to a certain way. Yeah. And it's very upset when I don't do it the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Because it's easy to do it. So yeah, why can't so we do it? It's easier I've not taught, to do it. I taught Chris how to fold them. Yeah, I've and taught so Denver many times he too. He does it right, but he does it kind of messy, yeah. which infuriates me. Weaponized but I really... incompetence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the person who redoes it. Because I'm like, I yeah. won't I let... use that at work <laughs> all the time. Thank you. <laughs> I won't let me become a person who refolds exactly. folded towels. Because mm -hmm. that makes like I'm busy. Um, but it does I can't watch him fold <laughs> the towels. Weaponized incompetence. Yeah. yeah. Denver, so good. Denver that uses so it on you. me all the time. That is so you. Oh, weaponized incompetence. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Who leads uh, the <laughs> toilet paper empty in the bathroom? Please. Not not very often. No, it doesn't happen not very often. You you did it the other day, but you you and I are not like yeah, we're pretty on top of that. Teresa does it all the time. That's rude. talk about weaponized Teresa. incompetence. That's rude. <laughs> That's aggressive. <laughs> Folding a no. towel wrong still means there's a clean okay, fold no. of towel. Be, in the, be like, clear bathroom. with what you're talking okay. about. We, I don't leave it empty. She does. No, but, I don't. Shh, shh, <laughs> my turn to talk. Beside the okay, so you have the toilet paper roll <laughs> on the roll. Below right. the tape roll roll, we have a, a container, like a little cage that yeah, yeah, will yeah, hold yeah. three paper towel rolls. So me, if I ever get the last toilet paper out of the three of the cage and I put it onto the roll, when I get off the toilet, I go to the closet, I grab three more rolls, and I refill the cage. Yeah, fill the magazine. Teresa never does that. <sighs> never does that. Ever. And then she'll be on the toilet and she'll be like, babe, babe. <laughs> I'm out of toilet paper. I'm out of toilet paper. And whatever I'm doing in the living room, I've got to stop my game. I've got to stop editing. i got to stop watching whatever I'm doing. Come into the washroom where it stinks. And then I got to... Oh, it got right under that And bus. then I got to so grab rude. the toilet paper and I got to put it in the toilet paper roll. And... So you just, all you have to do is just crack the door a little bit and just throw the batter. <laughs> you know, don't. And the other day, she tried to blame me. She's like, what's empty? Why didn't you fill it? I'm like, ah... Don't even try. <laughs> Whenever it gets down to the the preload is empty, I fill the preload so that I never actually run out. Also, I don't know, maybe Mastin can help on this, but she takes 10 squares <laughs> and puts them into a ball. Okay, listen, I'm not here to like that. I don't I don't judge people's I just have a ass. question, Madison, since you're the only personal. other... No, no. It's not the ass. It's when she goes pee. So I have like, a question for... We don't judge because you you're a girl. wipe your ass. Listen, I just have a question because oh. you're a girl. Sorry. Do you take your toilet paper and do you fold it or do you put it into a ball? I, oh, that's all I ask. Actually. I fold it. Okay, thank you. We can move on. Also, I fold it. How many squares? That's dependent on the situation. Tell me. For like a number one? Sure. Well, okay, so we buy incredibly good toilet paper. So do we. So like three. Thank you. Maybe four, depending Thank on. You. But I'm also like, if I just do a, like, <laughs> if I just do a pull and a rip, I don't like. 
put it back if I've got like five. I use that's three just, squares five and five I'm but it's, unwieldy though. No, but, but so I don't much. like if it's an accidental five, I'm not going to sure. put a no, square no, no, no. back. Sure, sure, so sure, sure, like, but you end up with a fold that's this long. Yeah, no, but it's like a three. The goal like, is three or four and I fold it in half. That's me. But you don't wipe your vagina, so you can't really <laughs> cut it on this. Uh, sure. Every time yep. you're wiping, we're talking poop and you should be using like wet wipes. So Sure. <laughs> well, look, you got to like use dry and then wet initially and then wet. yeah 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 okay good um yeah for number two i have no limit because i refuse to have any of that on my fingers well, no, I, I, do dog, I get poop on my hands so whatever the situation demands for a number two is what happens Wait, when your finger pokes through i have no Ow! <laughs> see that never happens <laughs> see, she uses a paper. Lot of toilet paper. <laughs> so the other day at the in the darkened times um i oh took our God dog God. out and he pooped and oh i God. grabbed a poop bag and i put my hand into the poop bag to pick it up and then oh. I turned it over and I pulled the bag and I was tying it and I went, oh, the poop bag had ripped oh and I was God. in the dark and I couldn't see that the poop bag had ripped. Did you, did you so cut your hand off? You were right there. And I walked in, I walked into the door and I was like, I need you to take the dog because I have dog poop on my finger right now. Um, so I'm like, I, yeah. If there was a way I could um, have extra baggage on my dog poop, there's a way I can have it extra on the toilet paper. Oh, my God. It's just poop, guys. Don't just put poop. it in your mouth or your eyes. Wash your hands. It's not that big of a deal. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Guys, if nobody wants to go home at any reasonable time today, I can keep going. So no, we're, no. We're no, 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 no. We're at a party oh a God. couple of months ago, and I am talking to this woman. Um, who has an 18 month old son. And so her and I ended up just chatting for the night and she was giving me advice. Oh. <laughs> and so she was talking about don't cheap out on the wipes, the baby wipes. And I was like, I'm not going to cheap out on anything because uh, like, especially baby wipes. Because, That's not yeah, in your vocabulary. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so she was like, because when you pull them up, the cheap ones all stick together versus one wipe coming out at a time. Mm. So if you buy the cheap ones, you have to put your one hand on it and pull the wipe out you know, so that you can get one wipe. And I was like, okay, but why is that like a big deal? <laughs> like, I hear you. you. Have no idea. But you will like, have well, shit on your hands. No, no, no. She's like, you're going to want to have your other hand free. And I was like, free for what? <laughs> and she's like, to hold your son's hands onto his stomach so that he doesn't play with his poopy balls while you're trying to get the wet wipe out. And so I was like, why is he playing with his poopy balls? She's like, because he thinks it's fun. <laughs> No cheap wipes. <laughs> She's like, you've got a few months, but she goes, when they find their balls, they love them. So when you take his diaper off, <laughs> their hands immediately go for their balls and they'll just hold them or play with them. That sounds like a male thing to and do. And that's the thing. And she's like, and sometimes they're covered in poop. Oh I can God. honestly instantly believe that. <laughs> but it's just like babies when they discover any other body part, right? Like when they discover hands, they put them in their mouth or feet. Like yeah. balls are just a body part to babies. And when they start out, they don't know. That's yeah. so, so yeah, funny. You have that's to buy funny. the good wipes. So that you can keep one hand on the child, one hand on the wife. Puppies, I hear you're great. Could you please sponsor me? <laughs> we'll take any sponsorship we can get. No, we don't want the Kirkland wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Thread talk is open to all. <laughs> all right, that's my story. Okay, oh, that was good. let's move on. We got I can't two stories there left. There won't be any more. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> my last one here. Am I the asshole for letting my child ride her pony to school? Oh, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I've done that too. Oh, I, we, I grew up with horses. Of course we've done that. Yeah. <laughs> Bucky. My I'm 30... to let her finish. <laughs> <laughs> My 36 female child, 7 female, asked if she could ride her pony to school last week. For context, we have a small paddock attached to our home where we keep two horses, one for me and one for my child. Every morning before school, my child gets all of her pony chores done before we leave and we normally walk to school, which takes around 20 minutes. We live on the outskirts of a fairly populated city where it's not uncommon to see horses occasionally, but we are by no means in a rural village. I agreed to let my daughter ride her pony to school because I thought it was a harmless, fun thing to do. And also, it gives the pony some exercise as we had evening plans and would be riding that evening. We arrived at the school gates and, of course, gathered a little bit of a crowd, which wasn't a problem. The pony is very good and lapped up 
all the pats and strokes from kids. One girl came bounding over from the year above my daughter and started shouting at me saying she wanted to ride. I politely told her that she couldn't because she doesn't have a riding hat and she would have to learn on a safer horse. She immediately started hysterically crying and pleading with her mom, saying he wanted to ride. Her mom looked at me with disgust and said, See, this is what happens when you have no self-awareness and bring a fucking horse to school, and stormed off dragging her kid with her. I was a bit taken aback, but I ignored her, sent my child into school, and walked the pony home. I was talking to my friend this weekend and she said I was in fact the problem and I was blatantly showing off and should have known that this would cause upset and problems. My response is I turn up to the school gates in jawed person boots regularly so everyone probably knows I have horses. Is that showing off too? All I wanted to do is let my daughter do something a bit silly and fun. Now I am really overthinking it though and almost feel nervous to go to school drop off tomorrow. So am I the asshole for letting my daughter ride her horse to school? Can everyone be the asshole in this one? No. What? Really? <laughs> oh, just because he doesn't See, want to buy his kid a horse one day. No, well, yes. But also, there is... <laughs> no. It, no. Depending on... No. The, no. Wait, no. <laughs> stand by. Stand no. by. Stand by. <laughs> the context of the town, like... No. You're... It's analogous to showing up with, like, a racing car. Yeah. 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 What's wrong with that? And that's... But if you have well, a racing car... What's wrong if I want to drop my son off in a super loud revving V8 engine car? Not necessarily anything, but you are drawing a bunch of attention. Is, is and it, to, is it, and to for, for the person to be like, well, what's the problem with just like... Like <laughs> you're, you're totally going outside of the, the recognized norm, which there is not necessarily anything wrong with, but you are drawing a ton of attention. Yeah. A. And... If you're B, B. <laughs> um, for the for the other lady to like freak out that her kid couldn't like hang on to his like impulses of wanting to like ride ride a horse, okay, she's a bit of an asshole too because she can't like take care of her thing. But I think her thing, her son. Uh, <laughs> I think you are being a little bit tone deaf if you don't realize that like riding a fucking horse to a public school may draw some attention okay well I, if, I got a question what if instead of it was a horse you're dropping your kid off on a motorcycle yeah because another, that's what you drive exactly another kid comes up and he's like i want to ride on your motorcycle because it's so cool and i'm a spoiled little brat <laughs> denver feels strongly about this yeah. I, I understand it is it is a spectrum and i'm mm -hmm. like if if you know, a car is over here, walking is here, like a motorcycle is here, a horse is here, riding a clown's shoulders is over here. <laughs> like there's like there's a there's a spectrum of attention that you are going to garner by your mode of conveyance to the school. I think and also a horse is a high spectrum attention <laughs> mode of conveyance. It depends on when you live. I no, I don't think it don't does. Live in a rural area. I well, don't think it, it does because it's not your job as a parent to worry about anybody else's kids and their emotions. Yeah. That too. Because if things but things <laughs> in life, you know, in terms of being put your hand down. Oh, just let me finish. <laughs> oh, I got I got a rebuttal. Go go go. Keep going. <laughs> it, everything in like life's not fair and every pa every family has a different financial situation. So if we're talking about like your tone deaf for bringing that horse here, you know, because our kids can't have horses. What happens when the next kid goes to a really great birthday party that you couldn't afford to mm -hmm. give your kid? Are you, gonna, castle. Has, are you going to castle. Are you going to feel like, are you going to be like, how dare you have a jumpy castle yeah. at your house? I couldn't afford that. So now my kid's upset. Yeah. How dare your kid come back and talk about Disneyland because mm -hmm. I can't afford that. You can't, you can't adapt your kid's childhood based on their peers and the, the feelings their peers may have. I agree. If you're, if you have a horse and that's your hobby with your child, riding it into school once, once as a treat and getting a little bit of attention. I don't know. I feel like that's completely allowed. I concur. Go Chris. I agree. So do our kids get the super expensive gifts from Santa or do we have to say this is from mom and dad and the buttons and the thimbles on the side are from Santa. 
No, I think that's exactly. How I, does I think that you even get compete. No, you How get that. That's it, that you're, it's not a rebuttal. You're agreeing with me. Each family is different, so the expensive gifts come from mom and dad because then that way Santa keeps it even. Like Santa doesn't favor one kid or the other, but we can favor our kids. Our kids are going to go to Disney. And then they're going to come back and talk about it. That's not mm-hmm. their fault. They're not like, we're not, I'm not going to let any other parent make me feel like an asshole. Yeah. Huh? My kids get off fly an airplane <laughs> all the time. I'm not necessarily. My, my, huh? like, you know what I mean? But I'm going to take my kid and their friend flying. Yeah. I'm not going to be made to feel guilty for the things that I can provide to my child. Yeah. Would, would, would you agree that landing the airplane on the football field would garner attention? I would not fly my kid to school, obviously. But, if I but, had a helicopter, it, no, no, if I had a helicopter and there was a helicopter landing on the school property, you, there's no fucking way you're shaming me for dropping yeah. my kid off in a helicopter. There is. You have no rights to say how I transport my kid to school. Also, like kids used to get horseback rides all to school all the time. Kids say. used to ride their horses to school by themselves. Like if you're in Texas or something and you're like one of those like cowboy or Montana like towns, 100% normal. It's a little different from us in our opinion because we live in like Toronto, Waterloo, city area and stuff. But like we grew up on a farm. We've done that. I've We've done that. ridden our horses to school and then my mom would just leash them back and ride them back home. I brought my pony in for show and tell. Yeah. And, but it was all coordinated with the teacher and my whole class came out to the parking lot and my mom took the horse out of the trailer in the parking lot. No one was allowed to get on it. Yep. But he was my show and tell item. Exactly. That's people, awesome. people brought in their hamsters and their artwork. <laughs> I brought in my fucking horse. Exactly. So, <laughs> so some of their spoiled kid brat. Some other spoiled brat who isn't raised right by their own parent, their own parent setting the thing. That's not your problem. Yeah. How you get your kid to school is not anybody else's problem. I'm. Denver's going to drive our kid in a Porsche one day. <laughs> Sorry. BMW. Porsche. Porsche. BMW. <laughs> well, I don't know who you I'm work for that, anymore. That this... It doesn't matter who I work for. BMW <laughs> is my heart. This lady being totally astounded that there was like any commotion well, associated with like 2023 a and people fucking are Porsche now, showing up. Then. That is that is my like everyone is an asshole. Well, don't be here. surprised. She's not on the asshole though. See, that's the thing that we are gonna like. Each parent but, has to deal with. If you have the ability, if you know you have the ability to give your kids something that not everybody does, you're gonna deal with that backlash. Sometime, like I keep going back to Disney, like because yep. that is a very um, luxurious thing to do mm-hmm. now. Um, so expensive now. Yeah, and it's like not every kid's gonna get to go to Disney. Yeah. And to answer your question, Disney doesn't. The Disney present doesn't come from Santa. The big presents come from mom and dad so that the other kids know that Santa doesn't like love one kid more than the other kid. Sometimes. But it's then okay. why is it our responsibility that like Santa has to be shittier in our house? It's than- not. Well, Santa's dude, not going to be shitty. He's just not going to be like Santa isn't going to be the big extravagant gifts. Dude, Santa is what you want it to be. Santa doesn't need even to be in your household. I also think that's, that that's like a that's a conversation to have with your like your kid's friends, parents at the time. Like if you don't want to, if you want to tell your kids Santa's not real when he's two, like that's your choice. You make the decision to bring Santa into your household, no? No, but what Chris is saying is that there's like a fairness for kids with different income levels is that it's, Santa doesn't buy your kid a trip to Disney. I never thought of that. Your parents yeah. buy you the trip to Disney. That so makes that sense. Because you're, you're like go, arguing yeah, why yeah, yeah, Santa... you. It's like my responsibility yeah. to show up in a rocket ship if I want to eat a dick. And then it's like, well, for well Santa, Santa all of a sudden he has to be, well, he Santa has to shop at Walmart because yeah. Jimmy's family kid has to shop at Walmart. Get the I'm lower not, key items I'm not for Santa. just like... I'm just saying that the Santa gifts are more modest. That's a respect not... thing for, I guess, every human. Yeah. Out there. But yeah. this lady didn't respect her like schools that but she that's, showed dude, up with. But that's not a fictional character. She a fictional character. She's not Christmas. riding to school on the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. <laughs> her mom yeah. gave her a horse. Yeah, bro. Her I'm parents just... afforded her a life well, that like, she's allowed to have a horse. But now that's all of a sudden, this, like, hold on though. That's a say. You know, say you go to a private. This other is kids have to like. You're going full on. I'm actually really surprised to hear this from you because this feels surprised. this feels very um what's what's the what's it called when you're like weak a fairy like what's that like snowflakey you're this feels very snowflakey yeah hey listen i all i said As was a, that everyone's an asshole and you guys like no, dude, no she can't be an asshole and i'm like Chris no, no everybody's like, a bit of an asshole no she can't be an asshole she, the the parent that can't control the sun 
definitely have a problem with. And also the fact that this lady didn't like fathom that there was going to be a reaction that a fucking horse showed up in the parking lot. I think that is completely <laughs> asinine as well. But not, okay, maybe not she should have expected it, it, but that doesn't make her the asshole. Yeah, make, she shouldn't exactly. feel judged by it. She shouldn't feel guilty for doing it. Here's what's going to yeah. happen. Chris, here's what's going to happen. Karma is going to happen to you in the future. You're going to be taken... James, or, no, no, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> he who must not be named. You're going to be taking he who, who knows. Be taking he who must not be named to school in your nice Tesla, and this kid's going to get dropped off in a twenty, no, a twenty twenty nineteen ninety nine <laughs> Honda Civic with rusted out, and that kid's going to say, "Why does it mine out of a Tesla?" Just like, can I, I take a ride in your Tesla? No, I'm just saying. There's a difference between a car and a motorcycle. <laughs> And a horse and riding a clown. You want to buy an airplane. This is all I'm saying. I we know, will, I agree. We will own an airplane when our kids are at this point. Your kids are going to be parachuting in school. I'm <laughs> so... mostly like arguing against the idea that this lady is so mind blown that like there's any type of commotion whatsoever. I will agree with you on yeah. the you part that. You learned to that... fly while you were in high school. Was there no like. That has nothing to do with my argument. <laughs> I will I will agree with you on the part that she shouldn't be surprised. That's all yeah. I will yeah. not agree with you on the part where everyone's an asshole. Yeah. Nope. Uh, yeah. You okay, don't have she's to, not an asshole. For you don't that. have to change. Yeah. Yeah. That's you can fine. be like aware that you're doing something that comes with privilege and people are gonna like yeah. judge you for it. Yeah. But you don't have to you shouldn't change your life based you on You also that. shouldn't post it on the internet being like, did I do a wrong thing? Like being super ostentatious with my horses. But she didn't do well, a wrong I thing. Mean, listen, if you want to have a you shouldn't post it on the internet thing, why the fuck are we all sitting here for the last two hours? <laughs> yeah. don't say None that. of these people technically <laughs> should have posted any of this shit. Credit shouldn't that exist if we're going down that route. Wife Hole. shit her pants yeah. like, <laughs> nobody is like the most mature person on reddit Very true. If, if you want to hold your opinion about she's the asshole i would that. just like to say that sometimes it's okay to be an asshole <laughs> you should wear that as a shirt or have I, like I a little logo. sign i made a yeah. logo out of it. i want to make a shirt i want to make mercia says sometimes it's okay to be the asshole so Chris is sometimes it's okay to be the asshole when he's sober and he's had a couple glasses of wine in Manhattan. So <laughs> this is what I was hoping for. His uh his like op- opinions are getting a lot stronger. Also, he really doesn't want our kids to have a horse. So he needs to just keep inserting that into every conversation. But you're okay with, with the dirt bike, right? Kids. You're okay with the dirt bike, right? Hey, you don't need to f- well, I mean you feed a dirt bike, but you don't need to like make sure that it's like warm and not wet and stuff like that. Mm, but I, I, yeah, kind of. We're very okay with our kids having dirt bikes. Fuck yeah. Okay, there's an update on <laughs> this one. Appropriate times, places and places. With safety equipment. Yeah. All the safety equipment. It, moderate, like normal amount of safety equipment. You make me feel like I'm oh. kind of a helicopter mom when you're like to have no. a bicycle, he needs knee pads and elbow pads. I'm like, no, you're, to have a bicycle, he just needs appropriate clothing and like, a helmet. You're like, he doesn't need as much protective equipment. I'm like, no, he needs everything. Like, we need <laughs> no. boots, not for knee a pads, bicycle. elbow pads, helmet, goggles, gloves, neck brace, like CD, Dionysi, like fucking AVG <laughs> or AGV. We need the whole thing. We're, the kid can't move because he <laughs> looks like the Michelin Man. Styrofoam, man. Denver's styrofoam like, <laughs> chest protector. Denver's like, okay, so here's your throttle. He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be like like the if he falls off the bike like a um uh air bubble bubble goes right around him bubble. No, kids need to fall and hurt and break. Just no no head injuries, no spine injuries, no head injuries. Scrapes. I don't think they need to break anything. I the kids are allowed anything. to break things. I never broke anything. I don't know how we all got through without breaking anything. The which worst, blows my mind. The worst thing I crashed my dirt bike once. I I think I broke my cracked my thumb. That yeah. was like the worst. <laughs> or, and I broke my foot. That was like the worst things. You but bent like my, my finger pretty aggressively to the point where I had like a dip in my pinky finger for like a couple of months. We were fighting over maple syrup. That is the most that. Canadian sentence you'll hear. <laughs> no, one it's this does, one. Right? It's this one. You can see like my knuckle comes out and then it dips in more so than this side. You yeah. just bent my finger, like my pinky from the top knuckle because I was, you weren't dumb. I don't know. We were, we were Sorry kids. Yeah, we were kids. I don't even Stupid remember kids. what it was about. But that's the only like broken bone. I broke my leg like, skiing for the first time at oh, 25. Shit. That's my first broken bone. All the dirt bike kids around me were like, I broke my arm. Yeah. I shattered my femur, like all this stuff. And I'm like. We were just better than all of them. Right? <laughs> mad, mad skills. You weren't happens, sending it hard enough. That's what happens when you have a track I in your front I actually wasn't sending it hard enough. I was always like took me forever to hit the double and I was always slow and steady. I'm like, <laughs> I'd rather not get hurt and just keep doing this longer. Travis See, Pastrana found, teach, frowns at you. Teach yeah, that no to Travis he must Pastrana's. not be named. <laughs> I, I shall. Update? All right. There is an edit. 
I want to clear some things up. Firstly, I am based in England. Secondly, the pony never went into school grounds. There was a small patch of grass about 30 meters from the main school gate, and we stood there so no child with allergies would be subject to the horse germs if they didn't deliberately come over to us. It feels very respectful. Yeah. Mm. This also means that I don't feel like I should have to run it by the school. And lastly, the pony is an ex-riding school pony. It has been surrounded by kids its whole life and used to do kids' birthday parties and everything. I know animals are unpredictable, but I was 99.99% sure that the pony would be fine and actually just appreciate the fuss off the tiny humans. Too fuss off? It sounds to me like there's a lot of comments that were saying this was dangerous, dangerous and stupid. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's not yeah, anywhere. That's not no, that's not our yeah. She didn't go on school property. She has, yeah, she did. A, like, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. It's a little ostentatious. It's no, it's definitely ostentatious. Sure. Again, coming it's the from same you, thing I'm as, so surprised. It's the same thing as buying your kid a brand new bicycle and him riding up to school and a kid saying, can I ride your bicycle? It's not. It's not, though. <laughs> it Pe- is? People have seen bicycles. I've well, had like... people ride my bike. I had a fat Again, kid sit on my bike I, it, and he it, bent the wheel. No, but I think Chris's different. point is it's that different, different. most like, kids have a bike. Like if you showed up wearing a like riding a, an elephant like everybody would be like holy fucking shit there's an elephant <laughs> yeah if someone showed bit. up with like a nice bike they'd be like he's riding a bike <laughs> like that's what i'm driving at maybe it is ostentatious if you showed and... up in a, a like nhra hot rod like drag racer it would be fucking weirder than showing up in a car like well, do you get what i'm saying I yes also, okay I thank also you think that there's something to be said for it's kind of cool it is cool I'm and if a kid, if a kid is parent says it's okay to go pet the pony, and same with like if in a car, if you drive up in a fancy sports car, it's like if the parents are all saying it's okay, you can sit in it, right? And like you don't make it a no, no, this is mine. If you're an asshole, says like you know, get away, this is that. But if you make it like an engaging piece, and you're the you know some kids anyway uh, we're people... on opposite sides yeah. and therefore i will debate this until about three in the morning we can't let <laughs> we'll people dictate your life <laughs> i'm not saying that you, i'm just saying this lady I will give should not be amazed day. i will give it that people were amazed i will give you that and i'll yeah. give you that it is ostentatious 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 especially if she's in england Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a little bit more appropriate when you're in England. I don't know. I Is feel it? like your rural towns, there's more people riding horses. I feel like this should be more normalized. Yeah, they do like fox uh, hunting there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel, like it, I feel like it depends <laughs> on where you live because like in certain states like Texas, Montana, where like horses and cowboys are you big. Know, could be clapping again to Manhattan. <laughs> this wouldn't even be a second, wouldn't even be a second thought. There, there was, uh, do you guys know who Whistling Diesel is? No. No? This is a YouTuber, really huge YouTuber, but um, this kid drove a tractor to school love it and the tractor got him in tr- the school got him in trouble for using the tractor as his transportation to get to school and then it is illegal whistling yeah it is it is illegal whistling diesel basically did like a protest and he has like millions of followers all off youtube and they're mostly people that own tractors and he said anybody who lives in this area if you show up to the school and protest with your tractor i will give you 500 dollars. like 400 people and like 400 tractors showed up for like this protest and he was able to make like a youtube video out of it and stuff like mm. that to like protest the kid getting in trouble for driving to school on his tractor wow. see that feels different because that is illegal yes so it, like a child did an illegal thing and the school, you know, there was a repercussion from the school for doing something illegal. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you like graffitied your school, would anybody protest that he got in trouble for graffitiing his school? He did an illegal thing. Yeah. Uh, he should be reprimanded for doing something illegal because you're not legally allowed to use a tractor um, on the road for any purposes other than farming. Yeah. And especially if he's underage. Correct. I don't and doesn't have a you. license because you if you're a far, if you're it depends on like province to province in Canada but in Alberta at 14 years old you can drive a tractor on the road for the purposes of farming so going from one field to the next field yeah that's legal yeah, yeah you can drive a truck you can drive yeah. a farm registered truck at 14 for the purposes of farming yeah you you can't just take a tractor to school yeah I agree, yeah. I agree with that it's just I, I yeah thought of it. there'd be of it. yeah no difference than stealing your parents car and going to school and the school being like we're going to call the authorities yeah that is true all right moving along yeah we got so, one more story and we're going to wrap this up for you because i know chris is getting tired chris is getting drunk this <laughs> we are we are done with the baby talk theme parenting. of the episode yes this one is moving into airplanes all right who likes those? 
Am I the asshole for pretending not to know my fiance after she had a meltdown during boarding the plane and was eventually thrown <laughs> off? No. <laughs> you married a carrot. Good night, everybody. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> I imagine I'm going to get raked over the coals for this one. So my fiance, maybe not for much longer in brackets, <laughs> and I were on our way back from my vacation recently. It was a great time and everything went off without an issue. That was until we started boarding the plane. Now, I know better. I only bring a small backpack with essentials in case I don't get my check bags. I can survive out of this backpack and I will always pass baggage check for size and weight because I've done it a lot of times using this system. My fiance didn't want to listen to my advice and chose to bring a basically regular full-size bag that barely fits the standards of carry-on, but generally speaking, the airline workers doesn't want to deal with the trouble and allows it through but this time the airline worker was not having it it was a packed flight and we were boarding last in economy and it was just a shit show i got through just fine with my little backpack but i could hear the argument from the boarding tunnel thingy and it was getting heated I was about to go back and try and smooth it out, but my fiance rushed past me and just boarded the plane. I assumed not having heard it clearly that the attendant had given in and let her on, but that was not the case. Oh my God. So we found our seats and settled in. I was pretty tired and I could tell she was so upset. So I just kind of tucked into the window and put my hat down and tried to take a nap. But soon after that, an airline worker and a cop showed up and they were not <laughs> fucking around. They wanted her off the plane. She tried to plead and cry, etc. but they were not having it. And maybe in a moment of panic or just plain self-preservation, the cop asked if we were together and I blurred out, <laughs> no. <laughs> so they have the same booking reference. <laughs> Shaking my head. I got killed with dagger eyes from her <laughs> as she shot up, grabbed her bag, and followed the cop off the plane. <laughs> she was also swearing and screaming the whole way out. Now, obviously, this is well after the event that I'm posting this. But when she did eventually get home, because she caught the next flight with the bag checked, I was there to pick her up. She obviously thought I was the asshole. And to be honest, almost Everyone I know thinks I'm the asshole, except for my boss and co-workers, who for context were very much relying on me to be back on time because I gave my word I would be for a really important project that was time sensitive. They were all very happy I didn't get thrown off. So, am I the asshole for not knowing her? A little bit. A little? Of course. A little bit. <laughs> He is. It doesn't matter <laughs> how stupid your partner is being if you've chosen them in that moment. Yeah. If you have chosen them. If you haven't, yes. if you didn't break True. up five minutes ago, you got to stand by your partner. Right. You chose your partner. You chose your partner. Yeah, now, you breaking up when you get home is perfectly reasonable. Yeah. yeah. If that's yeah, what you choose to do. <laughs> or be like, <laughs> not anymore, sir. I mean, honestly, though, like, what if that is the breakup? Or if that's the breakup. Like, if you're like, I'm being an asshole, if I don't you're know like, her, that's sometimes fine. Sometimes it's okay to yes. be the asshole because I'm not missing my important work project <laughs> and we are not staying together after I saw this shit. Yeah. <laughs> we are done after this. I'm not handling this for the future. So that's sometimes so it's thing. okay to be the asshole. Sometimes it's okay. That would be definitely a moment where it'd be okay to be an asshole. <laughs> yeah. You just have to agree that the consequences are you might not be in that relationship yeah. anymore. Exactly. He did put that right in the first. Yeah. Place. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like fiance. Yeah. yeah. How do you get that far? Exactly. And not know That's what I'm without knowing their behavior. Like the fact that she just blasted past, you ran down, down the first gate. Trip? Or the jet bridge. Well, some people it's do like, get engaged too fast. So yeah, it could yeah. be one of that those situations where... Well, what's the joke? It's like you married somebody and then you go on your honeymoon and you find out they clap when the plane lands. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh no, I like to rethink my entire marriage. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> Denver's a plane clapper. Oh no. Yeah. I well, shame okay. him. Don't worry. Hold on. Hold There's hold no on. wedding in Italy. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, because we have the perfect person to ask. Chris, 
Should I fucking clap when the plane lands or not? Do people clap when you sell them a car? <laughs> <laughs> Does me selling them a car save their fucking life? Does Did, him doing his job save saving your, your life? life? Yes. If he, if your life's in danger, he's put it there. <laughs> just saying. As soon as I decide to go forty thousand feet in the air, my he, life's in danger. If he has gotten to like three hundred feet off the ground and doesn't know how to safely get that thing on the ground, he's put your life in danger a long time ago. It's a job. Is it? You didn't clap only when in I took the movies, you flying. Or is it in your job when you talk about? souls on the airplane no that's, no, that's if we're declaring an emergency that's part of what we say okay so should i clap or not clap act like you've been there before <laughs> Fuck. coming from a pilot sometimes you know some, like whatever if, man i'm happy to join the other people who are clapping <laughs> sometimes the only time where like if it's an incredibly challenging yeah. condition how the fuck would i know i'm just no, no, sitting no, no, in no, the seat no if, if, if i if i come on the pa to, and I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have declared an emergency. Please follow the instruction of your in-flight crew. And then we don't end up in a fireball on the runway. Cool. Totally clap. Okay. If we just made it to Cancun, act like you've been there before. Have you ever had to declare an emergency? Uh, Not with people on board. Okay. Shit. Damn. We Yeah, I was taking an airplane back from uh, Florida. And we had like a, a circumstance where one of the computers like didn't know what the thrust lever was set at. So the way that the airplane is built, it like rolls one of the engines all the way back to idle. So we had like a partial engine failure on one of our engines. And actually you can – it's on the internet. I have no idea how to look it up. But the, the flight that we did, we ended up – uh, coming in and landing and we had the, the emergency vehicles like follow us off the runway Wow! and some dude was there with like a camera, <laughs> like <laughs> nothing. I mean, nothing happened. Like we yeah. just like landed and, and taxied to the terminal. But, uh, yeah, you can see like the, the, like, uh, Congo line of, uh, fire trucks that followed us off the runway. Wow. You're watching a video like that. I'm in that plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's been a couple of them. All right. Well, I guess I will stop clapping then. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Thought Chris is gonna agree with me. No, no, Fuck. no. Fuck. I am a um, snobby bag person who's always trying to like, you know, come in with my large amounts of copious shit and my computer and my iPad and my phone and my charger and like. You just got to make sure that you board early. They said, "Oh, we were yeah. the last ones on yeah. the economy." Yeah, well, then yeah, yeah, You don't yeah. get your bags on. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. but, but that being said, while I am trying to always sneak my bag on, if they catch it, I will always gate check my bag. I will yeah. never even fight with them. Yeah. On it. That's like and like so your handheld one if it goes under the seat. Try to get away with it, but when you get caught, don't yeah. fuck around. Yeah. Also, it's... I was like being, I like was a flight attendant, so it's like being, don't be an asshole. Yeah. To people who work at airlines mm -hmm. because there a, are rules. There a there are rules. We'll enforce them. We and, don't want to deal with your and shit. The federal police show <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I had a guy who wouldn't like put his kid in her seat. And so under two years old, your child goes on your lap. Over two years old, they have to have their own seats. So they have to be seat belted in. And we were coming in to land and she was standing in her seat playing with the light, mm -hmm. like, and, um, call button, like, uh, buttons. And, uh, I was kind of trying to like get him from my seat. Cause I was trapped in for landing and trying to tell him like, you know, you need to keep your child secure. We're coming in to land. If we land and that child's standing in the seat, they can go flying down yeah. the cabin. Smash your head we on don't something. know what, how good the landing is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I'm trying to explain that. And he like whips around. He goes, don't tell me how to like parent my child. And I was like, cool. So I stopped talking. But I, what happened was that he was not allowed onto his connecting flight. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> because we reported Perfect. him as if you don't listen to flight crew, like if you don't listen to your, in, um, your cabin crew, why would we let you on your next flight? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't exactly. listen to us here. So my in charge and I reported him. He got pulled off. Him and his family got pulled off his connection flight, got sat down with security. They let him on the next flight. But he Learned got a lesson. Yeah. he got told that this is like you you breach safety protocol with a two year old, mm -hmm. um, and his wife was sleeping, and so she didn't know what happened. Don't and... fuck around with the flight crew. Yeah, that, that is the the definition of like fuck around to find out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there is out. super calm. Yeah. No one he had no idea what was about to happen to him when I he got off it. the airplane. Uh, but yeah, you don't you don't mess around with safety. What, yeah, do, yeah. what do you guys think about Delta? We love Delta. Yeah, they're. 
they're I've probably the, the best airline. They've upgraded Delta. us. They gave us free vouchers. Yeah. They gave us the emergency exit row, which was extra leg room. And then we got free sandwiches. Delta's great. Love Delta. Their their lounge access is a little bit tight, but... Uh, yeah, we didn't get let in on the lounges. Yeah. I, Believe it or not, I fly a lot of Air Canada, so I don't have a whole ton of Delta. Mm. Yeah, we're I like, why you Air... fly so much Air Canada. Mm. <laughs> well, it's a little bit cheaper than if I wanted to go on vacation on Delta. I wonder if you have a hookup or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're Sky Team or One World or something like that, where Air Canada and United are um, Star Alliance. Mm. So. Mm. This has been a great episode. Our first yes. episode with you did your four job. people. So this is great. <laughs> Did you guys we're, have fun? We're getting applause. This is great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I am desperately thirsty. Um, Me too. I have to pee so bad. Talk because of all the talking. <laughs> um, but this was really great. Honestly, this was better than I thought. It turns out I like giving my opinion. It's and fun. We'll see, we'll see what this gets back down to. Actually. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's going to love your opinion. Gonna and they're going to want episode. you guys on. Petrified to listen to this, so I don't think I will. But. Yeah, I, I hate listening to myself again. I, just, I don't listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys are on Spotify, make sure you guys check us out on YouTube if you want to see what Chris and Madison's living room looks like because that's oh, where no. we're set up here. <laughs> and uh, Teresa has a couple things to say. Yes. Thank you so much for your support. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star review if you're feeling generous. Um, and if you're following us on YouTube, please also like and subscribe and leave us a comment. And we appreciate your support. What's the uh, Patreon link? We don't have we Patreon. We don't have Patreon. But <gasps> we I have say... YouTube memberships. So if you want early access to the episode, we try to drop them in on Sundays for the early members. So you can log into and sign up for like a members. And then you get early access to episode drops as well as like cool badges when you comment and stuff. Sounds like excellent value. Yes, very value. <laughs> very good value. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. He who must not be named has been kicking while you guys have been promoting. Aww. So he's, he's supporting you from the inside. He's like, go, Angie. <laughs> I can't and wait. Uncle. I can't wait. <laughs> and if you guys want to check out a little bit more into Teresa and I's personal life, we have a latest uh, Vegas vlog that uh, Teresa surprised me um, back in episode two that we did. We talked about Vegas stories. I finally finished editing that vlog. So you guys can uh, search Denver and Teresa on YouTube and check out our personal travel YouTube profile if you want to check out that video. Thank you, Madison. Thank you, Chris. We really enjoyed our time tonight. And we're excited to have you guys back in the future if you'd like to come back on. Love it. Love it. All right. Thank you guys so much.